Fu K, Fu K, Fu asterisk K. Heavens, are you trying to mock me? I am the MC, here. Blaze cursed and roared at the top of his lungs, gaping at the terrifying storm gathering before him. As if answering his curse, a heavy downpour happened. Followed by an intense quake of the sea. The tiny wooden boat beneath him starts to sway harmonizing to the cold wind, nearly tripping him into the sea. No, no, no. Drifting in the open sea with no help, Blaze felt despair and hopelessness. It hasn't even been 15 minutes before he transmigrated into this world. Like every regular transmigrant, Blaze inherited the memories of the previous body owner and knew he transmigrated into the world of One Piece. It's only been a few minutes but he had already encountered such a violent storm. Why? Why do I have to transmigrate into someone who was stranded in the middle of the ocean? The previous, 15-year-old body owner was a captured, shore boy working under an infamous pirate group. He fled the pirate ship using this tiny boat when the pirate crew clashed with marines. The funny thing is, the previous body owner didn't even know how to navigate. Ridden by the wind, he escaped the pirates but fallen into a more dangerous situation. He was drifting in the sea for nearly three days and survived till yesterday thanks to the little rations he had in him but it was long used up. Soon fear and anxiety took over him, drifting in the desolate sea with no hope of survival the previous body owner long lost his will to live. He died without himself knowing and let Blaze who died under truck con take over his body. Suddenly, an enormous wave rose pulling Blaze's small wooden boat along with him, and soon, he was thrown in the sky along with his boat. His weak hands firmly gripped the boat without losing it. The boat is his last stop, if he loses it then he will surely die, either eaten by some monstrous creatures of the sea or by the sea itself. Crash. The boat heavily landed on the sea but cracks already began to form all over it. Before Blaze could breathe, another huge wave rose behind him eclipsing the stormy sky. I am dead. The huge wave descended, crushing the wooden boat and Blaze with its massive size and force. Blaze regained his consciousness with disturbing noise around him and the aroma of heavy earthy wine assaulted his nose. With a slight twitch, he opened his eyes with much difficulty while experiencing intense pain in his head. The first thing he noticed is his shackled hands, it was tightly bound by a rope behind his back. Scrutinizing his surroundings, Blaze began to doubt life. Even though he survived that terrifying storm, he felt no joy. He was captured by the same pirate crew he escaped from Redscriff Pirates. The previous body owner's situation is similar to Kobe's, forced to work without any wages or whatsoever. He felt no one in the world can have luck as worse as him. It should be an inborn gift the previous owner of the body born with. He had been under their clutches for nearly six months. They killed his father and mother before capturing and making him their slave. At first, the previous owner wanted to escape and increase his strength before avenging his dead parents. But as days passed, he lost his fighting spirit under their daily beating and will to survive. What a pitiful boy. Oh, you have woken up. Why didn't you say so sooner? A playful voice reached his ear, rousing him from the trance. Turning his head, Blaze saw a brawny man with a straight, thin mustache drunkenly walking towards him. He remembered the face from the previous owner's memory vice captain of the Redscriff Pirates, Barb. Before he could say anything, the man threw a powerful kick with his right leg and sent him rolling over. Blaze's body hit the ship's mainmast, sprouting a mouthful of blood. He couldn't breathe, his face turned red while his body convulsed in pain. Blaze felt the same feeling from the kick, like when he was rammed by the truck gun. Barb wasn't a normal human, even ordinary marines can't withstand a single blow from him. After all, he has a bounty of 22 million belly. Even though he didn't use 5% of his strength in the kick, it isn't something Blaze can handle. What kind of transmigration is this? I want to file a complaint. Blaze mentally cursed, enduring the pain brought by the kick. Haha, <laughs> Barb, are you showing mercy since he's a kid? Look, he isn't even screaming in pain. A pirate commented, gulping wine from the bottle. Only then Blaze noticed he was in a deck, surrounded by 30 or so pirates. All of them exuded a cruel aura, wicked and corrupt. They are the type of people who would show no compassion when taking lives. The only common trait among them was the red scarf tied around their left arms. Hearing his comment, all the pirates in the ship laughed without any restraint, embarrassing Barb a little. Blaze's face sank further, he cursed, bastards. As he expected, he was once again kicked by Barb in the same spot his stomach. But as before, Blaze didn't utter any cry enduring in silence. His action surprised Barb further, as he knows the amount of strength he used in the kick. Little runt, how dare you to escape from us? Barb was enraged a little. Just as he was about to continue beating Blaze, a voice trailed over from the distance. Barb, if you injure him too much we can't sell him for a good price. Hearing his voice the entire deck turned silent for a moment before becoming noisy again. Blaze saw a 6 feet 5 inches feet tall man in his 30s coming out from the captain's cabin. Of course, Baylis recognizes him captain of the Red Scarf Pirates, dirt. Okie captain. Barb nodded his head and joined his fellow crewmates to enjoy their victory of destroying a rival pirate crew and acquiring their treasures. Dirt looked at Blaze without a sense of pity or compassion, a slave's existence is to listen to master's orders. Ever since you resisted, you lost your purpose. We will reach our next destination in a few days, I want you to be in a perfect state. I will kill you the next second if any buyer fails to buy you, so do your best. Saying this, Dirt turned around and stated, give him good food for the next few days, but don't let him slack off in his works. Blaze didn't say anything from start till end, he lay in the same place without any word. He knew his coming days won't be peaceful, it's better to recover his body to a peak state before Dirt sells him. Closing his eyes, he soon drifted to sleep as he was pretty much exhausted to zero and heavily injured. Blaze woke up at warm morning sunlight falling on his face, the air was fresh and the weather is pleasant. Cloudless blue sky stretched as far as his eyes could see. Though he just woke up, he couldn't shrug off the uncomfortable feeling welling up in his stomach, a sickening sensation. Sailing in a ship over the sea made him a little nauseous as it was his first time. The previous body owner is used to it, but he was not. It took him a few minutes for his mind and body to adapt to sea travel. 
Aside from seasickness, he felt an agonizing pain in his belly as if he was bleeding internally. It should be caused by that bastard Barb's kick. His second kick was really vicious. He wasn't alone in the deck, but no one bothered him. Shutting his eyes, Blaze checked the gift pack that he transmigrated with. He had no time and wasn't in a situation to check it yesterday. The gift pack is the reason why he endured everything. If not, he would have already retaliated and let Barb directly kill him. In his current state, even if he was a genius he can't survive in this world without any backing or support. Not anytime soon. After all, he was just a slave with little to no strength. But with gift pack, it's entirely different. He just had to wait for the right opportunity, then no one can stop him from ascending to the peak of this world. Stifling his zeal, he observed the gift pack in his mind. It was a square box wrapped in colorful and decorative paper with a golden ribbon lacing it. Wasting no time, he let the gift pack open with his thought. The decorative packaging came undone by itself and the box opened on its own. Inside the box lay three items, a black cube with blue linings connecting to form a strange symbol, a vial with red liquid, and a devil fruit. The black cube suddenly turned into multicolored filaments and entered his brain. Soon, a transparent interface materialized before him. Gift pack opened, one support system, two bloodline vial, three devil fruit. Four note I hope you like the gift pack, from an anonymous god. Blaze was stunned for a moment before coming back to his senses. Sure enough, how could someone transmigrate without a cheat? Ha ha ha. Right now, his mental state transcended the words happy and excited, words can't express his raging emotions. Suppressing his excitement, Blaze touched the bloodline vial. Soon rows of information appeared in the interface, stunning him once again. Refined Senju bloodline, produced from the bloodline essence of Ashura at Satsuki. Taste it, and you will possess the bloodline of Senju. Note, this world doesn't have any chakra. So, none of the skills related to chakra can be achieved in this world. It's what I am talking about. Blaze knew very well how powerful a Senjo can be. Immense physical strength, powerful regenerative abilities even lost limbs can be recovered, strong life force, stamina, and so on. Resisting the urge to swallow the vial with all his willpower, he switched his attention to the last item. Soon, a new row of information emerged before him. Modified Devil Fruit, AMA AMA no Mi, Sun Sun Fruit. Description, it's a special paramecia that allows the user to draw strength from the sun and also grants them the ability to manipulate the energies of the sun. This devil fruit is modified and the inherent weakness is minimized as much as possible. Fall in the sea, you will lose the effect of your devil fruit, but you can still swim. Handcuff with the sea stone, you will lose the power of your devil fruit, but it won't weaken your strength or hacky. Warning, this devil fruit should only be consumed after the constitution attribute caps 5 bar point. Otherwise, you will burn to ashes. As soon as he finished reading the information, the gift box disappeared along with the vial and devil fruit on its own, and a new row of information flashed in the interface. Initializing support system, loading, loading. The support system has been successfully initialized. System introduction, like its name, the support system's sole objective is to assist the host to achieve his dream. The system has no consciousness, so you can't interact with it. Name, Blaze Hunt. Race, Ordinary Human. Constitution, 0.6 average of strength and speed. Devil fruit, none. Haki, none. Items, Bloodline Vial and Devil Fruit. Tasks, currently none. Note, here all the attributes are relevant to One Piece World. An ordinary civilian would have an attribute of 1 and the strongest being 100. Your attributes aren't limited to the number 100. You can even go beyond that. A word from the anonymous god, anything related to the gift pack can't be shared or told to others. Otherwise, you will face the consequence. Closing the interface, Blaze opened his eyes only to meet with Barb's cold brown eyes which matched with his hair. What are you daydreaming about right after sleep? Here, eat your fill, and wipe the entire ship. If I see any dirt, I will make you lick it clean. Barb left, leaving behind the half plate of meat and indifferent words. As soon as he left, Blaze looked around him and noticed apart from two pirates who are busy watching the sea for any threats, the others went to have their breakfast. Interface Blaze thought and it appeared. He clicked on the bloodline vial and a small vial magically appeared in his hands. Opening the lid, Baylize emptied the contents into his mouth which had neither taste nor smell. As soon as he did so, he felt a burning sensation rising in his body. It was bearable. The burning sensation soon turned itch, followed by warm currents coursing through every part of his body. His constitution starts to change from the cellular level. He knew it will be a long time process, so Baylai's didn't dwell on it and soon began to greedily devour the meat slices that disappeared into his stomach in a few bites. Letting out a small burp, Blaze began to mop the ship. While his hands cleaned the floor, his consciousness assimilated the memory he inherited from the previous body owner and arranged it in an orderly manner. Within a few minutes, he learned everything he wanted to know. He's currently in North Blue, which is currently ruled by the Germa Kingdom. And the current timeline is 1509 in the Great Age of Pirates. Only three months have passed since the start of this year. Without a doubt, Blaze was excited thinking of all the legendary characters he saw in the anime and manga. He desires to meet all the characters and have a good fight with them. Especially Whitebeard, Kaido, Dragon, and so on. A strong feeling rose from his heart. Without his awareness, a strong fighting intent surged out of his body but it was soon suppressed by his thoughts before it was noticed by Dirt and others. If I can fight with them, no, thinking so far is useless. If I want to achieve all that, I have to escape from my current predicament and increase my strength. In the next few days, Blaze's skinny body gained little weight and his pale skin regained some color. It wasn't due to the good food provided by the Red Scruff Pirates but because of his new Senja constitution. Unlike his previous weak self, he now felt invigorated and could feel the mysterious power coursing beneath his skin. His previous constitution attribute changed from 0.6 to 0.9. 
He understood the Senju bloodline didn't increase his strength but it provided him an opportunity, an opportunity to enhance his physical trait. Many characters in One Piece world possess an abnormal physique which promotes their strength, speed, and healing abilities to another level. With his Senju constitution, he can stand on PAR with them by proper training and practice. Now he can't be said as a normal human too. As for Sun Sun Fruit, he can't eat it yet. He has to wait for his constitution attribute to reach 5. It won't be anytime soon considering his present situation. He can't confirm the extent of Sun Sun Fruit abilities without eating it. The system also didn't provide him with any detailed description of this devil fruit, but it couldn't stop his imagination from running wild. Though there's no weak devil fruit, compared to Tremor Tremor Fruit, Magma Magma Fruit, and other powerful devil fruits, he doesn't know how strong his devil fruit is. Strangely, the support system didn't give him any tasks in the last few days, as if it is waiting for something. Next day, the pirate ship of Redscriff Pirates docked at the island called Little Cage, located somewhere in the North Blue. This island has quite an infamous reputation and it's a resting place for many pirates, criminals, and other ill-famed people. The entire North Blue is ruled by the Vinsmoke family. Likewise, this Little Cage Island is also under the Germa Empire. Furthermore, this island has quite a few slave trading markets. Dirt and Barb directly led Blaze and other 20-some chained slaves captured from various villages and islands off the ship. Outside the ship, a wealthy merchant welcomed them dressed in rich attire, adorned in gold chains and bracelets. He was surrounded by a few bodyguards whose presence and strength is no less than Dirt and Barb. Haha, <laughs> Dirt, long time no see. It looks like you have a lot of goods this time. Good, good. The middle-aged smiled, while a few of his gold teeth gleamed in the sunlight. Not sparing a glance at male slaves, he directly checked the few female ones who were crying with their heads lowered. He touched them all around lewdly, showing no sympathy. He even tore some of their dresses to check the body shape. Before such an atrocious display, Blaze's heart throbbed a little but he can't do anything with his meager strength. It's only been a few days since he came to One Piece World, this type of inhuman display is intolerable to him who was from modern Earth. Even though such things are present in the modern world too, he hadn't witnessed anything in person. But now, beholding everything in person, his heart turned cold. It reminds him of the fact that he transmigrated to a world where pirates run amok, where murder and slaughter happen every second. Here, human lives are the least valuable, and justice is nothing but a tool to others. Clenching his fist, Blaze took a deep breath and remained silent. My priority is improving the strength now's not the time to do something foolish. What do you think, Sir Stephen? Good? They can fetch for a good price. Let's go, we can't be late for the auction. The middle-aged merchant Stephen grinned and waved his hand. Along with the other slaves, Blaze was dragged by his bodyguards for a few minutes and transferred to what seems like a warehouse where many other slaves were held in chains. No one resisted and they don't dare to. Soon, a few people came by and attached a bomb collar around all of the slave necks. As soon as Blaze saw the collar, he knew he was going to be auctioned off. Shortly after, all of the slaves were auctioned and sold to buyers. The females fetched for a good price while males sold for a little less. As for Blaze, he was purchased by a rough-looking middle-aged man who seemed to be in his forties. He looked intimidating with a large scar below his right cheek. 200,000 belly that's the current worth of Baylis. In fact, this amount is considered little in the field of slave trading, it was a basic price. It was only because Blaze was young, otherwise, no one would have bought him even if the price is lower. Glancing at Dirt and Barb who were counting money alongside Steven, Blaze understood. It looks like they have a cooperative relationship. I may be weak today but I won't always be. There will come a day, I will personally annihilate the Red Scarf Pirates myself. A cold light flashed in his eyes but it was noticed by the man who purchased him. The man suddenly patted Blaze's shoulder, drawing his attention. Are they the ones who auctioned you? The man asked. Yes, Blaze answered without hiding. Do you want to kill them? He asked. This time Blaze didn't answer. He wasn't afraid of replying yes, but he doesn't want to invite unnecessary trouble as he couldn't discern the man's personality. The man smiled and didn't question any further. He brought Blaze to a rundown wooden house located in the remote part of the island. It was situated on the other side of the island shore with little to no humans. Blaze too didn't spot anyone on the way. My name is Forrest, a former bounty hunter and now a merchant. I invested 200,000 belly in you, so I expect a return. If you bring me 1 million belly, I will free the collar on your neck. You can trust me on this. Although I am greedy for money, I honor my word. Forrest calmly declared. Blaze looked at Forrest, waiting for him to continue. He knew it's impossible for him to amass that much belly in a short time. I know an easy way, want to hear. Forrest continued while Blaze thought, here it comes. Tell me. A lot of underground street fights happen in the Little Cage Island. If you win a fight, you can earn 10,000 belly, 100,000 belly in a single challenge. I will teach you how to fight, you bring me money. It's a win-win situation for both of us. Do I look like someone who can win a fight? Blaze asked. The current you can't, but with my guidance and training, you can win against normal challengers. Furthermore, I won't mistake the fire burning in your eyes. I can see it, you know, your desire to become strong. Blaze shrugged and asked, instead of doing all this, can't you participate yourself? It's easier that way. It won't work that way. My name and reputation had spread far and wide, no one will accept my challenge. Good. I agree with your proposal. Blaze agreed. Both of them knew they are using each other, but they have no qualms. A month passed. Blaze trained well without wasting any time. Apart from teaching some fighting techniques, Forrest didn't meddle with how he trains and what he does in his free time. Occasionally, Forrest would bring him to watch street fights from time to time so that he can familiarize himself with the street rules and see how others fight. Now, Blaze has a general idea of what type of people engage in street fights, small-time pirates, bandits, criminals, and others who want to earn some belly in their free time. With his current strength and combat skills he learned from Forrest, he can fight some low-level challengers. 
His strength, speed, and constitution have undergone a massive change during this one month. Even though there's no massive difference in his build, his fist now carried unbelievable power. Ending his daily training, Blaze called the system interface which displayed his current attributes. Name, Blaze Hunt. Constitution, 2.2 Senja Bloodline. Devil Fruit, none. Haki, none. Items in storage, Devil Fruit. Tasks, currently none. Now he has a strength twice that of a normal human in one piece. In the first few days of his training, his attributes increased gradually but then they began to slow down. The higher the attribute the harder it is to increase them. Blaze understood this concept well. But till now, the support system didn't provide him with any task. He couldn't find the reason, it should be related to his strength being insufficient or something. Combined with his Senju bloodline, he has no problem fighting ordinary pirates but against pirates like Barb and Dirt who have a bounty of few millions, he will be beaten black and blue. From tomorrow, Blaze plans on joining the underground street fights. He knew it's a little early, but he had to do it. Next day, Blaze traveled to an underground street fighting area that resides in the western part of the town. Forrest didn't come along with him, as he knows if others come to know Blaze is trained by him it would only attract trouble. The street fight area is situated in a remote street. The entire street is crowded with pirates, gamblers, and small-time merchants while the smell of wine permeated the area. There were curses, swears, shouts, and cheers. All the buildings in the street were also occupied by pirates and shady peoples. Commoners called this street a gambler's den, a fitting name. Notifying the person responsible for the street fights, Blaze waited for his turn. The fights are fixedly randomly here so he has no idea who he will be facing. The amount he earns is directly related to the bet placed by the onlookers and himself. He doesn't have any money, but Forrest will place the bet in his stead. The agreed amount is 10,000 bellies since it's his first fight. Neither of them plans on taking any risk. His turn came after waiting an hour. His opponent is a lanky man with a wicked face. Blaze observed his opponent with a solemn look while the other party also did the same. A newbie, huh? Ka ka ka, my luck is good today. I am placing 50,000 belly on myself. His opponent laughed and relaxed his vigilance. Blaze clutched his sweating hands and entered the large ring formed by people. Naturally, he is a little nervous, it's his first fight after all. Apart from weapon prohibition, street fights don't have a lot of rules. Even killing the opponent is nothing but an everyday occurrence. Forrest watched Blaze from distance, enjoying his cigar. In fact, he was shocked by Blaze's rate of progress and how he mastered all the combat skills he taught him. He couldn't relate to how such a monster of a kid was caught by pirates. He was sure if the latter didn't die prematurely, he will one day shock the world. If not for Blaze's lack of experience, only a few can defeat him in underground street fights. Forrest was sure of this fact, it's just he didn't inform the latter. Seeing he was a newbie, the surrounding pirates placed their bet on the lanky man without any further thought. Crafty Dog, crush the newbie? I am placing my entire savings on you. The newbie kid is dead. Crafty Dog has a bounty of 120,000 belly. I bet he can't even survive a punch. I bet he will survive. Craft Dog, kill him in a single move, I will give you half my earning. All sorts of shouts could be heard from the encircling spectators. Crafty Dog laughed and rushed at Blaze without any alertness. He was sure he can overwhelm his opponent who's nothing but a kid. Closing his opponent, he threw a punch that overflows with strength aiming at Baylai's head planning on crushing it in a single blow. What nobody expected is, Blaze easily dodging the move by tilting his head. Even Blaze himself was astonished, how can his punch be so slow? Is he trying to play me? What? Crafty Dog was shocked a little but it didn't stop him from trying again. Once again, Blaze easily evaded the Carved Tie Dog's sweeping kick. He isn't a fool, he understood. His opponent is weak, but he's stronger. The fact itself surprised him a little as he heard about Crafty Dog before and seen his fights. Evading his opponent's another punch, Blaze clenched his right fist and delivered a clean uppercut without holding his strength. The strike broke Crafty Dog's front teeth and knocked his opponent unconscious to the ground. Oh, the entire noisy street suddenly became deadly quiet. None of them expected this outcome. What the fuck? How could Crafty Dog lose in a single hit? It's set up. I want my money back. The gamblers began to curse and circled the person responsible for arranging the match. A single blow from me took him out. Blaze looked at his fist and found it hard to believe. At that moment he knew, he's no longer the same young man who was sold as a slave. As a die-hard fan of Whitebeard and Garp, his dream isn't about obtaining one piece or becoming Pirate King but to become the strongest man in the world. Gripping his fist, it's not enough to face the big shots of this world. But a thousand mile journey begins with a single step. I have taken the first step, now I need to persevere and survive in this cruel world. One day, I will eventually stand at the top of this world. Ignoring the gambler's glare and yells, Blaze collected the belly he won and left the street fight area. He then walked towards the wooden hut. After exiting the town and walking for a few minutes, he saw for us standing there leaning against a tree bidding the apple in his hand. Unmistakably, he was waiting for Blaze. You fought well. Here. Forrest commented and tossed a fresh apple at him. Grabbing the fruit, Blaze asked, How much did you earn? 100,000 belly. Forrest's answer startled him a little. Didn't we agree for 10,000? Why did you risk 50,000? What if I had lost the challenge? I know you won't lose. I didn't know you had so much trust in me. Blaze chuckled, taking a bite. Another three months flew by. Blaze's appearance underwent a massive transformation in these few months thanks to his Senja bloodline. His height reached 5 feet 8 inches, his body began to show signs of an athletic figure with toned muscles, while his raven black hair reached his neck. Wearing a sleeveless gray shirt and white trousers, Blaze practiced and experimented with his dagger skills taught by Forrest. His previous immature and childish look had long disappeared from his face. He looked neither tough nor cold type of guy but his nonchalant gaze is capable of keeping others at bay as if he isn't your normal human. His hands skillfully danced with the dagger exhibiting a thread-like trail in the air. 
A single swing from his dagger can easily take a life without much difficulty. His strength underwent a huge transformation in these three months and the Senja bloodline also perfectly integrated within him. With a thought, the system interface appeared before him. Name, Blaze Hunt. Constitution, 4.8 Strength, 4.8 Speed, 4.7 Devil Fruit, None. Haki, None. Items in Storage, Sun Sun Fruit. Tasks, Currently None. His constitution attribute reached 4.8, just a little away from breaking through the 5-bar limit. Then, he can eat his devil fruit. The problem is, his steady improvement recently declined as if he reached a bottleneck. It's also the reason why his constitution attribute stopped raising in recent days. It should be some kind of body limit, but Blaze doesn't know how to get past it. Despite that, with his current physical strength and skills, he can easily defeat pirates with a bounty below 20 million belly. If he used his trump card, he can fare against some pirates having a bounty of around 30 million. Captain of the Red Scarf Pirates, Dirt, has a bounty of 28 million belly. He wasn't one to be taken lightly, he has quite a notorious reputation in North Blue. Combined with his crew strength and indirect support of Germa Kingdom, only a few dare to mess with them. If Blaze wants to defeat them, he needs a proper plan. Only by revealing all his trump cards, he can hope to defeat them. He already paid 1 million belly to Furus a few days back, the latter also kept his promise and removed the exploding collar. The only reason he stays on this island is to find the location of Red Scarf Pirates. He's waiting for news from Furus who agreed to help him in finding the Red Scarf Pirates. He doesn't hold that much hatred against the Red Scruff Pirates but he inherited the previous owner's resentment along with his memory. So if he doesn't kill them and eliminate the hate, his heart won't be at peace. Just as Blaze was thinking of training his physical body, a small notification sound rang in his ear. He knew it came from the support system. He hurriedly summoned the interface and as he expected, there was a slight change in the task area. Trial task, revenge is a dish best served cold. Description, defeat Red Scarf Pirates and kill Dirt and Barb. Time limit, 20 days. Reward, 1, free attribute point. Blaze was overjoyed, it's the first task assigned by the system. Even though it was just a trial one, the rewards are very good, one, complete free attribute point. Just as he was pondering how to complete the task within the allotted time frame, he saw Ferris approaching him from distance. Did you discover their location? Blaze asked soon as the latter arrived. Yes, a few days back Red Scarf Pirates destroyed a patrolling marine ship angering a marine captain from the headquarters. The latter is furiously searching for their whereabouts so they were hiding on a small island called Kaka which is a two-day trip from here. Are you sure you want to confront them? They are pretty strong you know. Even I have to use a few tricks to defeat Dirt in one-on-one, -on -one, Ferris stated. Yes. Only destroying them I can move forward. Okay then. I know a merchant ship that leaves today evening. They are traveling in the same direction, you can board their ship. Forrest said. Thank you. Blaze nodded his head and thanked. Even though he was bought as a slave, Forrest took good care of him in the last few months. What do you plan on doing after destroying Red Scarf Pirates? Forrest asked, inhaling the cigar. I intend on joining the Marines. I have seen and experienced a lot of cruel things the pirates and wealthy merchants had done in these few months. If I want to eradicate them all and bring justice to innocent people, joining Marines is the only way. Then you will become a world government's lapdog. In this world, no one is qualified enough to command me. I am joining Marines, not the world government. Blaze firmly replied. Even before crossing over to this world, he hated the world government, now even more so. When he transmigrated, he just wants to become strong enough to fight some strong people. His goal is still the same, to become the strongest man in the world but a new thought sprouted in his heart. Why not change the world along the way? If his action can change the life of a few innocent people, he's happy with that. Pity? If all the pirates are like Luffy's crew then it won't be a problem but the reality is different. Hearing his answer, for aside thinking of all the achievements Blaze had done from the day he met, from a weak kid to how he earned the title King of Street Fight. Now, no one in the Little Cage Island mess with Blaze as his reputation even exceeds the latter. Even a pirate with a bounty of 20 million belly fell under Blaze's hand. Forrest couldn't help but wonder how strong he will become in the future, where he will stand in this cruel world. For the first time, he began to anticipate someone's future. In the evening, Blaze boarded a small-scale ship that is used to transport goods and left Little Cage Island. Kaka Island. Boss, how many days do we have to be stranded in this godforsaken place? I feel bored. A red scarf pirate with spiky hair complained to his captain Dirt. Barb irritatedly replied. We wouldn't be in this situation if not for you guys sinking the marine ship in the first place. Hee <laughs> hee, Barb, we didn't think the cannons we bought would have such explosive firepower. Yeah, the entire marine ship was destroyed in two cannonballs. Shut up. Dirt shouted, silencing the noisy bunch. Do you bunch think it's some kind of joke? The one pursuing us is a captain from marine headquarters who's well-trained, skilled, and powerful. He isn't your ordinary marine captain that we encounter in West Blue. If he catches us, then it's over for us. We will be shipped straight to the Impel Down with no hope of escaping. The 30-some pirates silently listened with gulping actions. They knew they are in trouble for this time. If even their captain with a bounty of 28 million is afraid of a marine then what are they? The good thing is, he's from headquarters, he won't stay in North Blue for a long time. He will soon leave, then we can sail the sea as usual. Dirt said, he's been sailing the sea for nearly 20 years, he knew things that ordinary pirates aren't privy to. He even sailed the Grand Line when he was younger, so he knows how strong the marine and real pirates are. It's also the reason he decided to stay in North Blue, plundering the town, destroying weaker pirates, and such. Dash. On the other side of the shore, Blaze reached Coca Island with a small lifeboat provided by the merchant ship that dropped him far away from the island. Fastening one end of the rope to a large rock, he jumped out of the lifeboat carrying a small string bag in his hand. Blaze scrutinized his surrounding, stepping foot on the island. 
He heard the Kaka Island is a remote one with no human visiting. Apart from a few pirates who would stumble onto this island, no one comes here. Wasting no time, Blaze began to search for the Red Scarf pirates and found them on the other side of the coast. With his current strength confronting them head-on is a foolish act, so he decided to wait and attack when they least expect. It was already evening, they will definitely get drunk before they go to sleep. After two hours, the Red Scarf pirates started their party and got sloshed after an hour. Baylize watched everything from the distance. He noticed three pirates didn't drink wine. Without a doubt, they are on the watch for today. Dirt went to sleep in the pirate ship docked near the shore while the Barb and other pirates slept where they got drunk. Blaze needs to knock the three undrowned pirates without alerting others. Even though the pirates are wasted, a call is enough to wake and sober them up. Blaze came prepared as he knew he can't defeat twenty-some pirates by himself. He then took out a small blow weapon and several needle-like darts from the bag. He dipped the darts with a powerful venom he bought in the little cage island. The venom was said to be extracted from a powerful sea creature, it's capable of knocking the target in a minute. Placing one of the poison-coated darts inside the long narrow tube, Blaze aimed at a sleeping pirate and blew the other end of the tube using his entire breath. Instead of dealing with the conscious pirates, it's easy to knock out the snoring ones. With little to no noise, the dart shot and directly pierced the pirate's leg. His noiseless action failed to attract the three watching pirates' attention. Even so, he was extra careful in his actions so as not to alert them. Blaze repeated the steps to other pirates who were already drunk and wasted. Since the potency of the venom is too high, they can forget about opening their eyes for the next two days. He waited a few minutes for the poison to take effect only then he relaxed. Aside from the three watching pirates, all the others were knocked out. Unknowing of the predicament, the trio rested around a fire pit, chatting. Blaze then emerged out of the dark, alarming the three still conscious pirates. Unsheathing a sword from his waist, a blonde pirate asked, Who are you? How did you get here? Aren't you little runt Blaze? You look different. Another pirate who was familiar with Blaze said. Blaze didn't let them continue, he dashed forward with a dagger in his hand. His move stunned the three watching pirates, they all wondered. Is he trying to attack us? Who in a sane mind would attack thirty-some pirates single-handedly? They found this notion ridiculous. But they soon discovered the problem, none of the pirates snoring around them woke up. Hey guys, wake up. The third pirate panicked seeing Blaze's cold eyes. Even before the trio could react, a figure streaked past them and blood gushed from their throat. The trio tried to stop the bleed with their hands but it was in vain. They soon collapsed to the ground, lifeless. Their face displayed incredulous expressions in death as if they couldn't understand why none of their mates woke up and how a cut appeared on their neck. Taking a random sword kept by a knocked pirate, Blaze walked towards Poisoned Barb. This guy deserves special attention. He won't forget the vicious kick dealt by the former when he first transmigrated. Barb who was dreaming and snoring loudly doesn't know his death is approaching. Standing directly above him, Blaze drove his sword down at Barb's heart. Ah. Barb let out a shrill cry of pain, but no matter how much he struggled he couldn't get up. Only then he noticed his body was impaled by a long sword, he couldn't get up because he could muster the strength from neither his hands nor legs. Even his actions were sluggish as he was poisoned. Unlike normal pirates, his body was able to restrict poison to some level. His eyes searched for the assaulter's appearance but were shocked to find a familiar face. Barb couldn't believe his eyes, you best. You. He couldn't even speak as he struggled to breathe with his heart penetrated. Blaze's eyes were devoid of emotions, there were no anger, resentment, pity, and so on. Because he felt neither joy nor fulfillment when he stabbed Barb. He killed Barb for two things, for the previous body owner and completing the system task. Barb died with his eyes wide open. Even in death, he couldn't understand why Blaze. He would have accepted if it was anyone else, but never in his dreams he thought, he would die by a slave's hand that they sold. Barb's shrill cry alerted Dirt who came out of his cabin just to see his friend breathe his last under Blaze's hand. Barb. Dirt cried with red eyes. Barb isn't the same as the unruly bunch of pirates he recruits, he is his friend from a small age. He's a man Dirt can trust his life with, but now he's gone. His ice-cold eyes were filled with endless killing intent as he looked at the assaulter but like Barb, he was shocked to see Blaze's face. You little bastard, I should have killed you along with your parents. Jumping from the ship, Dirt roared and shot towards Blaze. Nearing Blaze, he wielded his sword and waved at the latter with full power. Yanking the sword he stabbed Barb with, Blaze blocked Dirt's long sword. An explosive force traveled from Dirt's sword, shoving him two steps back. The sword he held vibrated intensely meeting the latter's sword, he's strong. Just a single strike, Blaze knew Dirt is a tad stronger than he anticipated. He wasn't a skilled sword expert and wasn't interested in it either but his knowledge is enough to judge Dirt's sword skills. Not giving any chance for him to relax, Dirt swung his sword again. His slashes were powerful, rampant, and wild. Furthermore, his physical strength has also far exceeded what Blaze expected. Is he hiding his strength the entire time? Blaze isn't a greenhorn too. He trained and honed his combat skills in these few months by battling countless peoples. Even so, Blaze found Dirt is different from all the people he fought with before. The murderous aura emanating from Dirt pressured him to the ground, limiting his strength. Dirt is far more experienced and his combat techniques are refined after killing countless living beings. Furthermore, all his strikes are delivered with an intention to kill. Blaze knew he was being drawn into his opponent's pace, he has to do something. With three backflips, he created some distance between him and Dirt. Unrelentless, Dirt slashed his sword bridging the gap between them at breakneck speed. Blaze was forced to block the attacks with his sword while looking for an opportunity to strike back. Suddenly, with a powerful thrust, he lunged at Dirt and punched the sharp edge of the sword with his entire strength. Boom. Dirt blocked the attack by skillfully deflecting it with his sword. At the same time, Blaze threw a punch at the ladder. Bird blocked it by raising his left arm, the ground below him cracked and the impact swirled the wind around them showing how powerful Blaze's punch was. Dirt was horrified. He couldn't believe his eyes. How can he be so powerful? It's only been four months, he can already fight me evenly, 
Blaze's strength only intensified his killing intent and a thought came to his mind. I have to kill him otherwise my heart won't be at peace. Clang, clang, clang. Dirt and Blaze exchanged few blows, while Dirt left two sword wounds in his body. Just as they continued their fight, Blaze sneakily drew a throwing knife stashed in his back prepared specifically for Dirt. Using the chance Blaze was distracted, Dirt knocked the sword from his hand with a fast swing. Blaze didn't panic about losing a weapon, he quickly evaded Dirt's sword strike by whirling left. At the same time, using the whirling body movement he hurled the throwing knife from Dirt's blind spot. Since Dirt didn't see the knife, he couldn't evade it from piercing his spleen. The knife injury didn't even make him flinch, this kind of small wound is nothing to him. But what he didn't know is, Blaze already coated the knife with poison. This kind of underhand method may seem despicable but in this cruel world remaining alive is important. For that, a man can do whatever it takes. Ting. Pulling the knife out, Dirt flung it away casually. Do you think this type of small knife wound will affect me? No, Blaze said. Hearing his answer, Dirt's expression changed. You poisoned the knife? Shameless? I didn't expect you to be a sly one. Hehe. <laughs> he. To deal with a wicked and rotten person such as you, any kind of means is a noble one. Blaze commented with a smile. He didn't wait for the poison to take effect and launched an attack. Few minutes passed but Dirt still fought with his full strength. Obviously, the poison hasn't affected his entire body yet. From this one can imagine his immense physical strength and vigor. As minutes passed by, Dirt began to exhibit signs of influence done by the poison, his speed reduced, his sword swing slowed down. Using the opportunity, Blaze sliced Dirt's stomach with his dagger and forced him to take a few steps back. Spitting blood in his mouth, Dirt took the initiative to attack Blaze again. What a monstrous physique. If even such a low-level pirate with a bounty of 28 million is this troublesome what about the pirates with billion bounties? Eventually, Dirt lost his strength, and the sword he clutched in his hands loosened. Blaze didn't expect him to possess such endurance and willpower. Even after reaching such a weak state, he didn't fall but still persisted. It's really commendable. It's not limited to him, most in the One Piece world possess such will. Lifting his sword high in the sky, he directly chopped Dirt's head off his neck and kicked his flaccid headless body to the ground. As soon as he killed Dirt, a heaviness in his mind faded. Blaze let out a sigh, looking at the star-filled sky. As I promised, I avenged your parents' death. Even so, he felt a little uncomfortable killing Barb and Dirt as this is his first time taking a life. Taking a deep breath, he firmed his heart. He recalled the things Dirt and Barb did during the six months the previous owner stayed in their ship. Thinking through it, the uncomfortable feeling disappeared. Killing them is me being merciful. At that moment, a notification sounded in his heart. With a thought, the system interface appeared before him. Trial task, revenge is a dish best served cold. Description, defeat Red Scarf pirates and kill Dirt and Barb. Time limit, 20 days. Reward, 1, free attribute point. Stas, completed. Accept the reward, yes slash no. Blaze was excited as he screamed in his mind. Yes, yes, yes. As soon as he thought yes, there was a change in the interface. Name, Blaze Hunt. Constitution, 4.8 strength, 4.8, speed, 4.7. Devil fruit, none. Haki, none. Items in storage, sun sun fruit. Tasks, currently none. Free attribute point, 1. Tapping his chin, Blaze pondered, how to use the free attribute point. Let's first improve the constitution to 5. With a thought, his constitution rose by 0.2 while his free attribute point reduced to 0.8. It was just an increase in 0.2 but he felt his entire physique is undergoing a massive transformation. Blaze knew it's due to him passing the 5 bar limit. Clenching his fist, Blaze felt a raw power in his hands. He once again checked the interface and as he expected, there was a change in his constitution attribute. Constitution, 5.0 strength, 5.1, speed, 5.0. What excited him is, now he can eat his devil fruit. Blaze thought, and a devil fruit appeared in his hands. It had a golden stem and appearance similar to dragon fruit. It was dark orange with crimson ornate swirls covering the entire fruit. Up close, it seemed like the entire fruit was burning. Just holding it in the palm, Blaze felt the fiery power held inside it. For better or worse, he's going to eat it. The ability of the fruit decides how strong he will become in the future. Opening his mouth, he took a large bite and swallowed it whole, trying his best to ignore the taste. But, he still felt the unpalatable flavor on his tongue. It truly tastes like shit. Fortunately, he didn't have to eat the entire fruit. The remaining part of the fruit magically disappeared and entered his body. In the next second, his whole body turned red as if it is boiling. White steam emanated from his skin under extreme heat, while everything within a one meter distance started to melt. Oh shit, how do I stop this thing? A blinding golden light emitted from his body and Blaze felt the temperature of his body keep on raising showing no sign of stopping. Stop, stop, stop. After a minute of battle with himself, Blaze controlled the temperature in his body. I better learn to control this power fast so as not burn others to crisp. After experimenting with his devil fruit abilities for another hour, he got a general idea of his powers. Even though he ate sun sun fruit, his body isn't strong enough to bring out the fruit's full potential. With his present strength, he can only control and manipulate extreme heat. Now, his abilities are similar to Don Exino's hot hot fruit, or Charlotte Oven's heat heat fruit. He can perform heat-based attacks at varying temperatures. Furthermore, he's immune to all types of heat including flames, lava, and so on. As he's the sun himself, even though he couldn't draw out the full power of the devil fruit, he was extremely happy with his current progress. He has an idea of how he should develop his fruit abilities in the future. The sun fruit isn't as simple as manipulating heat and fire. It's the source of everything. For example, solar energy manipulation, solar explosion, gravity manipulation, and so on. He once again checked the interface. Name, Blaze Hunt. Constitution, 5.0 strength, 5.1, speed, 5.0.
Devil Fruit Potential, 4.5. Haki, none. Items in storage, none. Free attribute point, 0.8. Tasks, currently none. An extra attribute related to his Devil Fruit appeared in the interface panel. Unlike developing himself, with the system, he would have an easier time grasping all the fruit abilities. Blaze then put all his remaining free attribute points into his Sunfruit raising it to 5.3. After breaking past the 5 bar limit, he felt obvious changes in his body. His control over the Devil Fruit increased, so was his ability to manipulate the heat. After a night of experimentation, he can command the heat in his body without any difficulty. Unknowingly night passed and sun rose from the faraway horizon. It's then the shocking thing happened. When the sun rays descended on his body, he felt the change. Something inside his body absorbed the warm energy from the sun, dumbfounding him. The energy from the sun harmonized with his Senja bloodline, enhancing his constitution and Devil Fruit powers every second. It wasn't obvious to human eyes, but he could feel it. He didn't foresee such an incredible development. Only then he realized, his devil fruit is an overpowered one. Blaze was overjoyed, with his newfound ability he can improve his strength faster. Just as he plans on experimenting some more, he spotted a marine battleship in the distance sailing towards Kaka Island. The battleship anchored few kilometers away and 100 some marines approached the island in lifeboat. Leading the marines is a muscular, broad-chested man decked in a captain coat. Blaze recognized the marine, Maynard the pursuer. He was introduced in Dressrosa Arc as Vice Admiral but now he was just a captain. Even so, he wasn't one to be trifled with as he's from headquarters. Since the current timeline is only 1509, Maynard looked young and fierce with a cigarette in his mouth. Just a look, Blaze knows he isn't the latter's opponent. The marines behind Maynard looked at one another in confusion. Aside from the dead ones, the other pirates were still sleeping without any care in the world, this is the first time they encountered such a weird situation. Why are they still sleeping? They aren't even putting us, the marines, in their eyes. Fool, I think they are knocked by something. Otherwise, no sane pirate will sleep before Captain Maynard. The marines discussed among themselves. Meanwhile, Maynard glanced at his surroundings and spotted Durd's chopped head and lifeless barb with his heart pierced. He didn't expect to find them dead. He also noticed Blaze and a notion formed in his head. Did he do it? What's your name, kid? Maynard asked while Blaze stated his name. Blaze, a good name. Did you do this? Yes. Even though Blaze admitted it, Maynard and other marines found it hard to believe. An unknown kid around 14-15 taking out two wanted men who had nearly 50 million bounties combined? It's unheard of. I can't believe he killed Durd with that skinny arm of his. A marine commented. Right? I think he's trying to earn the bounty amount by claiming their death. Why did you do it? Maynard asked. He didn't bother to ask the question, how did you do it? Because it doesn't matter to him. What matters is why. They killed my parents, forced me to work in their pirate ship for a few months, and sold me as a slave, Blaze stated his reason. Since he plans on joining the marines, he didn't hide anything. Even if he did, the marines will find the truth sooner or later with their intelligence network. Maynard nodded his head in understanding, he didn't ask any other question. This type of thing is pretty common to him. In fact, half of the marines in the world were hurt by pirates one way or another. Maynard then ordered the lower-ranking marines to clear the area and apprehend the knocked pirates. In a few minutes, the marines transferred the snoring pirates to the battleship and destroyed the Redscriff pirates' ship by burning the entire ship along with the dirt, barb, and three dead pirate corpses. Are you interested in joining the marines? Maynard who took care of the things on his end came to Blaze and asked. Yes. Blaze agreed. Good. Come with us. Maynard considered how the battle went and that's what intrigued him. Blaze's strength and wits piqued his interest. After Blaze and other marines boarded the battleship, it cruised towards the nearest North Blue Marine base to hand over the captured pirates. Since this marine ship is from headquarters and commanded by Maynard, they don't need to arrange everything by themselves. On the deck, a marine challenged Blaze. They want to verify whether he killed the pirates by himself or someone else did it. Since this batch of marines is from headquarters, they are naturally stronger than ordinary marines. Even though they won't be able to defeat characters like Dirt by themselves, they are more than capable of taking him down using their numbers and coordination. Furthermore, their conviction and determination are also far stronger. What kind of pirates they hadn't seen in Grand Line. Blaze didn't reject their challenge. With both his attributes crossing five, he isn't an ordinary human anymore. There were many ensigns in the marine ship but none of them could defeat Blaze. Blaze also didn't have it easy either, he was only able to defeat them by draining their stamina. If not for his Senja constitution, he would have been easily overwhelmed by them. Let me fight him. A lieutenant ranked marine came forward while the other marines cheered for him. Meanwhile, Maynard and another marine officer watched the bout from the helm of the ship. Captain that kid is good. He has excellent strength, stamina, and decent fighting skills. If guided properly, he will become a wonderful marine. Amen. I forwarded his profile to the marine headquarters. They will decide what to do. Maynard agreed. Leaving him in the four seas is a waste of his talent. Nowadays pirates are becoming more rampant in the Grand Line, it's really a great age of pirates. Higher UPS are also finding it hard to cope with the surging number of pirates. The number of marines is limited after all. Maynard spoke, smoking his cigar. Next day, Blaze, headquarters decided to enlist you as a seaman recruit. And you will be directly entering a training camp organized by the headquarters. Maynard announced. What? Blaze was surprised a little. He thought it would take time and he needs to gather huge merits before enrolling in training camp but he didn't expect that he will be directly given the opportunity. Our ship is sailing towards the headquarters so you will be accompanying us till we reach there. I didn't expect you to be so lucky. Saying this, Maynard left. Blaze was so excited that he couldn't sit still. Who wouldn't be? In the current timeline, Black Arm Zephyr is the marine instructor and in charge of training the marine recruits. If he trains under him, his strength will progress fast and he will also have a good backing in marine. 
Just as he was fired up, he heard a notification in his mind. Please wait, support system is being updated. A row of information appeared in the interface. What triggered the update? Blaze wondered. It didn't take long for the support system to finish updating. As soon as the system was updated, a new interface with a slight change appeared. Name, Blaze Hunt. Occupation, Marine. Constitution, 5.0 Strength, 5.1. Speed, 5.0. Devil Fruit Potential, 5.3. Hacky, None. Items in Storage, None. Free Attribute Point, 0. Tasks, Currently None. Ding, Occupation Determined. Since the host chooses to be a Marine, all your tasks in the future will be related to the profession of Marines. Generating Task. Dash Task 1, Do 3000 Push UPS Daily for a Week. Time, 7 Days. Reward, 0.1 Constitution plus 0.1 Devil Fruit Potential. Dash Task 2, Do 3000 Squats Daily for a Week. Time, 7 Days. Reward, 0.1 Constitution plus 0.1 Devil Fruit Potential. After seeing the interface, Blaze understood the support system is linked to the profession he chose. If he had chosen to become a pirate, the tasks will be related to that. Without wasting any time, Blaze began his push-up. It won't be easy as 3000 is quite a large number even to him. And, it's the easiest way for him to increase his strength. It would take a few days for them to reach the marine headquarters and he doesn't plan on wasting his time by sitting still. Apart from training his body, Blaze also trained his mind through meditation. The development of devil fruit abilities is directly linked to his mind and imagination. A week passed by. The marine ship finally reached the marine headquarters marine ford. In Blaze's eyes, it's a legendary location where the world's strongest man fell but now, before him it was still intact without any damage. When he was on Earth, he often dreams about Marine Ford and what it's like to be in the center of the location. Just hearing the name War of the Best always excites him to the core. Clenching his fist, Blaze roared in his mind One Piece World is the best. From the ship, he noticed countless Marines in white uniforms rushing here and there. What to say? Blaze felt this place is alive with full of energy. Even the air surrounding this place is fresh and full of spirit. Just looking at Marine Ford, a strange feeling of justice arose in his heart. I will change the fact of Marine being a world government's lapdog and let Marine become the strongest power in the world. Haha, <laughs> Blaze, are you shocked to see the Marine headquarters? Maynard noticed his excited expression and asked. Haha, <laughs> you should be. We are the greatest power in the world safeguarding ordinary people and bringing justice to all who commit atrocities in the name of pirates. As a Marine, you should feel excited, firm, and responsible, bearing the word justice behind our backs. Patting his shoulder, Maynard said. Let's go. Just as he got off the Marine ship, he saw Monkey D. Garp, a legendary One Piece character. Even though he likes him very much, the fact he let Ace die made Blaze hate him a little. But now, the old man had the carefree expression just as he had before the war while a part of his hair is still black. The Garp of now is relishing the prime of his life. A man who can fight on pair with Pirate King G.O.L.D. Roger. Seeing Garp so close, Blaze couldn't control his emotion and unknowingly a strong fighting intent rose from him startling Maynard and other Marines in the vicinity. As the target of the fighting spirit, Garp naturally knew it was aimed at him. In fact, he was shocked when he noticed it's coming from a young boy. The fighting intent disappeared as fast as it appeared. It was an unconscious act from Blaze. If it was on Earth, no one could sense his intentions and understand what he was thinking but here it's different. In the One Piece world, a person with little strength can easily perceive other parties' intentions with their extreme sense and hacky. Grinning, Garp made his way towards Blaze. Gripping his fist, Blaze faced Garp's towering figure that stood before him. Strangely, he wasn't the least bit nervous. Boy, you want to fight me? Garp asked, bidding a rice cracker in his hand. Seemingly amused by his young face. Yes. Blaze nodded his head while looking at Garp with reverence. It's a form of respect that one shows when meeting a person stronger than oneself and they admire. Wahaha, you are pretty courageous for a little brat. Garp laughed and punched Blaze straight in his face without any notice. Blaze flew back a few meters before crashing onto the ground. Strangely, he didn't feel any pain from his broken nose but an indiscernible feeling surged from his heart. I have to strike back. I need to strike back. Jumping back to his feet, Blaze's entire body emanated scorching vapor. The fumes forced the surrounding marines to take a few steps back. A hot breath enveloped everything within a one meter radius. Blaze calls this heat sense. In this one meter domain, he can perceive everything using the heat wave radiating from his body. As for Maynard and other marines who Blaze traveled with, they watched the commotion with interest. They didn't expect the kid they brought would straight away pick a fight with Hero of the Marine Garp. Moreover, they are also oblivious to the fact that he's a devil fruit user. A heat type devil fruit power. This kid hit it well. Maynard thought. Wasting no time, Blaze rushed towards Garp and threw a punch while his heat sense observed all his opponents move. With this ability, he can even predict the opponent's next move based on the slightest muscle tension in their body. His senses perceived Garp putting his strength on his left, predicting his body is possibly leaning towards his left. In midair, Blaze's fist changed direction. What? Garp was taken aback a little. Hacky? No at the last second, his body stopped moving and evaded the strike. Since Blaze's fist changed direction he couldn't strike Garp who remained still where he was. But in onlooker's eyes, Blaze became someone who couldn't even punch straight. Because if he had, he could have hit Garp who remains unmoved. But only Garp knows what happened in that split second. Garp who evaded the strike observed Blaze close. He long guessed the kid before he ate devil fruit with heat abilities. What made him curious is, how did the kid predict his movements with no prior knowledge to Hacky? Blaze knew it's not time to hold back his strength. He stopped restraining his devil fruit power and let his strength explode. Both his hands heated to extreme temperature and turned scorching red. The intense heat even melted the stone tiles beneath his feet. With that, he once again clashed with Garp. What astonished him is, as before, Garp effortlessly blocked his burning hands without any difficulty. 
What kind of physique is this? Even my blazing fist failed to char his skin. As he expected, you can't gauge the characters of One Piece with common sense. As his fist missed the target, Blaze used a sweeping kick. Like his hands, his feet also heated to an intense degree and glowed in fiery red. It was also blocked by Garp. His eyes can perceive Garp's movement but his body couldn't cope with the extreme speed. I need to be faster. Blazing his legs and pushing his speed to the limit, Blaze fought with much ferocity. He was like a wild animal that wants to catch its prey, exerting every ounce of his strength. Even so, he couldn't even touch the hem of Garp's cloth. A minute passed, but the situation didn't change. From start to finish, Garp didn't strike back, allowing the wild Blaze to attack however he wants. In the mid-battle, he even found time to eat his rice crackers. By the time, all the marines in the surrounding came over and formed a circle watching the battle in interest. Who is this kid? Why is he trying to fight Garp San? He's a heat-type devil user. Why I haven't heard of him before? Is he new here? Blaze became famous the first day he came to Marineford. All the marines were curious about his identity and his devil fruit. As they know all the devil fruit users would raise in rank very easily. Unlike the spectators, Garp noticed the difference. The temperature around Blaze keeps on increasing and with his hacky, he sensed it's damaging the latter's body. If this continued, it would heavily injure him. Of course, Blaze didn't notice any of this. The only thought running in his mind is, he wants to strike Garp, at least once, or force him to reveal a part of his strength. Unfortunately, he overestimated his strength. Deciding it's time to end the fight, Garp's image flickered. His figure disappeared, then appeared behind Blaze. With a chop, he knocked him unconscious so that the kid can stop hurting himself further. This brat. Garp laughed a little and looked at unconscious Blaze with narrowed eyes. Take this kid to the infirmary? Notify me after he wakes up. Tossing a few rice crackers into his mouth, Garp left the area mumbling to himself. Interesting. Blaze aroused his interest. He liked his personality and the spark he saw in the latter's eyes. He won't mistake it, the kid has the heart of the strong. Besides, he noticed Blaze's mind is pure. Maynard grabbed Blaze's unconscious body and moved towards the infirmary. He didn't expect Blaze to pick a fight as soon as he landed on the marine fort. You are pretty bold, kid. Maynard mumbled. Admiral Sengoku's office. Garp recounted what happened in the square to Sengoku while cackling aloud. It's been years since I met such a fine brat. He will be a fine marine in the future. Hearing his statement, Sengoku asked, Devil fruit power related to heat? A year ago, I heard one of Big Mom's sons named Charlotte Oven ate a devil fruit which is confirmed as heat heat fruit. So that youth couldn't have eaten the same devil fruit. Is it related to temperature fruit? I don't know, we can ask him once he wakes up. Garp said and carefully asked, Why don't you leave that kid to me? I will make him a wonderful marine. No way. Sengoku rejected outrightly by slamming his hands on the table. Who knows what kind of justice you will teach him. Kizan is a good example. You don't understand Sengoku. I saw it in his eyes, his desire for strength. He isn't the type of person who will listen to others' orders. You have to handle him nicely. Garp said, like how I handle you. Sengoku rebuked. Wahaha, yes, that's right. I need to read his report before deciding how I should manage him. Sengoku waved his hand and pressed a bell on his table. At that moment, a marine officer came in and handed him a report of Blaze. As soon as he was enlisted as a seaman recruit the marine headquarters gathered all his information. Reading the report sent to him, Sengoku determined to make Blaze a strong marine. I am handing him to Zephyr, you stay out of his training, Sengoku said and tossed the report to Garp. Next day, Blaze woke up in an infirmary. He felt uncomfortable and exhausted. There's also slight pain in some parts of his body. Cracking his head, he recalled yesterday's events. The consequence of overusing the devil fruit power is too great. My strength isn't strong enough to handle the repercussion, I better refrain from rashly using the devil fruit powers. Blaze thought. Even so, he felt some changes in his body. With a thought, the system interface appeared before him. Name, Blaze Hunt. Occupation, Marine. Constitution, 5.4 Strength, 5.5, Speed, 5.4. Devil Fruit Potential, 5.5. Hacky, None. Items in Storage, None. Free Attribute Point, 0. Tasks, Currently None. His Attributes have Increased. Even though it's just 0.1, the change was there. Fighting Garp without holding back had possibly unlocked some of his potentials. It confirmed Blaze's previous guess, battling is a good way to enhance his strength faster. At that moment, a tall, broad man wearing a doctor coat, chewing a fishbone arrived. Blaze recognized him as the marine doctor fishbone in. Oh, you woke up so soon. I thought it would take another two days, you have an excellent physique. Fishbonin commented. He wasn't praising but telling the truth. When Blaze was delivered to the infirmary, he checked his condition so he knew all about it. Even though he wasn't injured, his muscles were completely worn out as if someone squeezed a lot of life energy out of them. Your condition is nothing serious. Eat a lot of nutrient foods for a week and you will recover. Saying some comforting words, Fishbone left the small room. Just a few minutes after the doctor left, Garp came over. Brad, you woke up. Yes. You are pretty strong for a, eh? How old are you? Garp asked, seeming pretty relaxed and nonchalant as ever. We'll be 16 in another three months. Good. Why did you want to fight me? I think it's the first time we had met. Who wouldn't? I heard you are the only person in Marine who fought Pirate King Gold Roger on PAR when he was alive. I want to see how far the gap is, between me and the Blazwand late Pirate King of the Sea. Blaze's reply jolted Garp for a moment before he laughed aloud. Wahaha, you are pretty funny for a hairless brat. Even so, why did you join Marine? To become stronger. Blaze gave a candid and instant reply. Why do you want to become stronger? To fight the strongest, you have to be stronger. His reply stumped Garp but it was in line with his personality so he didn't question further. Let's go out. What you need isn't rest but a lot of grilled meats. Garp stated. 
Blaze agreed with Garp on this one, so he climbed out of the bed and followed him. What is your devil fruit power? Garp asked. I don't know. After I ate a weird fruit, I gained the ability to control and manipulate heat to varying degrees. Blaze replied. Are you sure? Garp asked. Yes. Why? Nothing. I heard the heat type devil fruit was already eaten. So we don't know what type of devil fruit you ate. Only knowing the type of devil fruit you ate, you can improve it further. Oh. Blaze exclaimed but thought in his heart, so Charlotte Oven already ate the heat heat fruit. I was meaning to ask you, brat, how did you predict my movement yesterday? Is this related to your devil fruit ability? Yes. By releasing heat wave, I can sense everything within a meter range. Blaze told without concealing anything while Garp nodded his head in understanding. Garp then led Blaze to a training field and requested, show me what your devil fruit can do. But, don't overuse it like the last time, just a simple demonstration will do. No problem. But first, I need to recover my physical strength. I haven't fully recovered yet. There's still exhaustion in his body. With that, he won't be able to display his might. Okay, you go and fill your stomach. I will call Sengoku. I have a nagging feeling your devil fruit isn't as simple as you portray. Garp told. This old man possesses a terrifying instinct. Blaze silently mused. He wants to keep his devil fruit ability mysterious, otherwise, he wouldn't mind revealing the name of the devil fruit. Thirty minutes later, Blaze met Sengoku and Garp in a training ground located in a remote location. He could tell the two of them want to keep whatever he's going to show as a secret. It coincides with his intention. Admiral Sengoku. Blaze saluted the latter with respect while Sengoku nodded his head with a slight smile. Sengoku liked Blaze's personality and disposition as soon as he met him. He's calm, confident, and energetic with a trace of a smile on his lips. From him, he felt a strong positive feeling. I heard about your devil fruit power from Garp. Let's find out how yours different from the heat heat fruit. Sengoku stated as he's also curious about the unknown devil fruit. Walking to the center of the training field, Blaze explained the abilities of heat manipulation, blazing fist, heat sense, heat blast, heat breath, heat beam, and so on. Just as he finished, he raised his right hand. It glowed in fiery red, and the color slowly changed from bright red to pure gold. At that moment, even the temperature around them began to rise and affect the surrounding. Blaze quickly controlled his heat ability and reduced the temperature of his hand to normal. He then showed the ability of heat blast. A strong, scorching heat wave discharged from his body and spread in all directions. This kind of ability won't help him in fighting against stronger opponents but it can take out a group of weaker ones. I'm experimenting with the extent of the fruit powers, so I still don't know for sure. Blaze shared his thoughts. After 10 minutes of presentation, Garp and Sengoku also came to a conclusion. His fruit isn't as powerful as they thought but it has limitless potential. It's in Blaze's hand how he improves it in the future. It's clear your devil fruit is different from heat heat fruit. I think it's some kind of special paramecia that's unknown to others. Sengoku stated. It's a good devil fruit ability. Thank you, Admiral Sengoku. I too think my devil fruit ability can get stronger with me. Blaze told and vaguely revealed some of the fruit's abilities, explosion and fire manipulation. I am fortunate to be transmigrated in my favorite One Piece world. As you said yourself, you can only bring the full potential of your devil fruit by growing stronger. But you are pretty weak, right now. And, you know that well. I plan on sending you to a location where young marines with good potentials are trained marine special training camp. Some of the strongest admirals, vice admirals, and rear admirals of marine headquarters came out of that training camp. I think it's a perfect place for you. Sengoku stated. I have high hopes for you. Blaze nodded his head. He knew Admiral Sengoku started to value his potential, and devil fruit power ability. It's what he needs right now, strong support. Furthermore, Sengoku also needs strong marine officers to maintain the peace of the world and stop rampaging pirates of the sea. Lately, the pressure on marines is huge since various new, strong pirates arise to sail the sea every day. Most of them are influenced by Roger's words and want to find the one piece while the remaining sail the seas for treasures and freedom. It's truly a great age of pirates. If Blaze wasn't wrong, Sengoku will soon ascend to the position of Fleet Admiral succeeding current Fleet Admiral Kong. Right now, the Marine Admirals aren't Kizan, Sakazuki, and Borsalino. They are just Vice Admirals now. If he's not mistaken, in another three years they too will be promoted to Admirals. You will be transferred to the training camp in a few days. So rest well for now. On the third day, a Marine officer came and informed him. Blaze then went to meet Garp who led him to the Marine battleship. What he didn't expect is, Garp also boarded the ship along with him. Clearly, he was bored staying in headquarters and want to take some time off. Blaze shook his head. According to Garp, the training camp is located in the calm belt which can only be sailed with marine battleship lined with sea stones below them. The island should be similar to Amazon Lily and Rusukena where Luffy trained. Blaze thought. It took the battleship one day to reach the large, verdant island. From the distance, the island looked small with various camps and buildings. Blaze also noticed a large number of marines training on the island. Once the battleship reached the island, he came down along with Garp and other recruits who were on the ship. Baylize wasn't the only one sent to the training camp from headquarters. Just as they got off, marine instructor Black Arm Zephyr came to welcome Garp. He wore an eyeglass and was clothed in a purple suit with a marine coat draped over his shoulders like a cape. Zephyr, long time no see. Garp you look as carefree as always. Instructor Zephyr. Blaze went forward and gave him a respectful salute he deserved. He admired this person for producing so many powerful characters for marines. One of the heroic and noble characters he has ever seen. Unlike in the One Piece film, Z, the Zephyr of now looked rather vigorous with trimmed hair and a stern look. He hasn't lost his arm yet. The current him is truly strong. Zephyr was taken back receiving a sudden salute from a person whom he hadn't met before. From Blaze, he sensed respect and admiration directed at him which further perplexed him. Many people respect and admire him but it's the first time he sensed such an intense one. He is. Zephyr asked Garp. 
Wahaha, he's the one Sengoku mentioned. How is he? Garp laughed. He's weak. Zephyr openly said and it's the truth. If not for his devil fruit, many people can defeat him with ease as his physical power hasn't matured yet. Don't underestimate him, he has the potential to become admiral in the future. Garp reminded. Oh, let's test it then. Zephyr said and ordered recruits to wait in the nearest building. Then, he led Blaze and Garp to a training field located in the distance. Blaze's body steamed and his hands heated to blazing red. Applying his heat sense, he rushed forward and attacked Zephyr. He didn't hold back his abilities. As he knows only by showing his talent, he will gain the latter's favor ability. But Zephyr evaded the strikes with ease. It's within his expectation. Blaze didn't stop his attack. His hands rained a barrage of blazing fist endlessly against Zephyr and suddenly, he blew a scorching heat beam from his mouth, forcing Zephyr to use Soro. As for Z, he was not that shocked since he heard about Blaze's devil fruit power from Sengoku. With a swift movement technique, he appeared before him and sent a kick. His moves were casual and without any power, so Blaze was easily able to predict his attack with his heat wave and dodge it by bouncing back. You can stop now. Your weak physical strength limits your devil fruit abilities. And, your combat techniques are also very clumsy with no style. You have to train from the basics. Blaze nodded his head in agreement as he knew his shortcoming well. What do you think of his devil fruit? Any idea? Garp asked. His devil fruit ability doesn't look anything different from heat heat fruit mentioned in the devil fruit encyclopedia. We don't have to dwell on the fruit name, I think it's quite a helpful fruit in combat. Zephyr explained. After an hour, Blaze dressed in a low-ranking marine uniform, consisting of a white short-sleeved shirt and dark blue trousers stood in the training ground. His shirt was emblazoned with the marine emblem. Not just him, every marine trainee nearly 300 standing in the training ground was decked in the same attire. All of them are new to the training camp like Blaze, picked from various areas of the sea. Zephyr glanced at them with a stern expression and spoke. Let me introduce myself first. I am Zephyr, a former admiral. I currently serve the marines as instructor, training new marine recruits like yourself. The duty of the marines is to maintain a law and order throughout the world while eliminating any kind of existence that disrupts the peace of the world. In our cases, it's mostly pirates and some criminals. Carve my words in your heart, anyone in the world can run facing undefeatable opponents but not us. If you do, countless innocent lives behind you will die. A marine should never run, regardless of who your opponent is, understood. Yes. All the recruits cried in unison. The word justice in our back carries more weight than you can imagine. You will understand it in the future as you sail the sea. Now, let's start with your training. Zephyr stated. The word justice differs from person to person. Blaze has seen various forms of justice in the One Piece series, Aokiji's lazy justice, Kizura's unclear justice, Sakazuki's thorough justice, Fujitora's humane justice, and so on. As for Blaze, he believes in the strongest justice. If he's the strongest, then it doesn't matter whether he's right or wrong, what he does becomes justice. A good example is the world government. It doesn't matter what they do, it becomes justice because they are the strongest group in the world. Just as Zephyr was explaining the training plan and what they have to do daily, a notification sounded in his ear, a new task has been triggered. When Blaze checked the interface, he was surprised because it wasn't just one but a series of tasks. Task 1, learn Marines Rokushiki and become proficient in it. Time limit, 1 year. Reward, 2.0 constitution plus 2.0 devil fruit potential plus 1 free attribute point. Task 2, One Punch Man Workout. Description, do 2,000 push UPS, 2,000 sit UPS, 2,000 squats, and a 30 kilometers run daily for 750 days. Time, 750 days it isn't mandatory to do the tasks daily you can take a rest in between. Reward, 5.0 constitution plus 5.0 devil fruit potential plus 3 free attribute points. Seeing this, his eyes widened. Damn the rewards are too good this time but I won't go bald like Saitama, right? I don't want to. Task 3, Punches and Kicks. Description, do 1,000 punches and 1,000 kicks daily facing the sun. Time, 1 year. Reward, 2.0 constitution plus 2.0 devil fruit potential plus 1 free attribute points. Blaze was happy the system released so many tasks but if he follows the system plan he'd be exhausted to death, every day. Zephyr explained about various sessions that happen daily from physical exercise, combat training, strategies to general knowledge class. Blaze didn't expect these many things to be taught in the training camp. I'm sure the following year is going to be hell for me. Next day, all the marine recruits were called by the marine officer early morning, even before the sunrise. None of them complained as they knew the cruelness of the world. Arriving at the training ground, they were told to run the kilometer-long training ground 20 times. Meaning, they have to complete a 20 km run. In fact, it's just a small distance in One Piece world but the crux is, they have to finish the run in under 30 minutes. It's a little tough for ordinary recruits. Under Zephyr's watchful eyes, they began the training. Along with the others, Blaze also started to run. At first, everyone was energetic and ran at an even pace. But gradually the weaker ones start to slow down, while the stronger ones overhauled them and continue to run. After the 15th round, most of them slowed down and just trotted their way through. Fewer than 20 recruits maintained their speed and ran at the same pace. Blaze was also in the small group but suddenly his eyes noticed a familiar figure in the group. At first, he couldn't believe his eyes and he checked again to confirm the person's identity. He's none other than, Fergo, what is he doing here? Only then he remembered according to the current timeline, it is indeed accurate. Blaze then tried to remember every detail concerning Fergo. Demon Bamboo Fergo was one of the four elite officers and the first to occupy the heart seat of the Don Quixote Pirates under the codename Coruscant. At age 26, he enlisted in the Marines under Doflamingo's orders. I didn't expect he would also enter the training camp. One year after becoming a Marine, he asked Sengoku to transfer him to G5. 
He then reached the rank of captain by the time Doflamingo took over Dress Rosa, and eventually became a vice admiral. He did all this while keeping his true identity hidden from everyone outside of his affiliates. He's truly a terrifying person. In the original work, Fergo was in Marine for 15 years and without a doubt, he's very strong. If I am not wrong, he already knows how to use Haki by now. I thought the training camp will be pretty boring but with him, it's going to be fun. True, Fergo is strong but he's in Marine training camp. If he reveals the real strength it will blow his cover. It's his current weakness. Blaze smirked, he will serve as a good punching bag. Then he glanced at other marine officers to find any familiar figures and noticed two Jun and Shizo. Both of them looked very young around 20 unlike in the series. In the original work, Jun was even considered for the admiral position while Shizo was able to easily fight post-time skip Luffy. Meeting all these characters made Blaze excited. Suppressing his thoughts, he continued his training. First, he should increase his strength before trying to fight others. Aside from Fergo, he has the confidence to beat other recruits of the same year but it would be a little challenging with his current strength. After running 20 rounds, they were asked to perform other body training like push UPS, sit UPS, squats, weightlifting, and many more. By the time they finished the training, breakfast time came. It was the only good thing in the training camp as various kinds of highly nutritious meats were given. Just eating two large meat pieces Blaze felt the exhaustion from the training fade away and once again re-energizing the physical body. His physique absorbed the energy from all the food he ate and strengthened his muscles, bones and he even felt the change in his cellular level. After breakfast, they were once again ordered to arrive at the training ground. The next training session is combat assessment. Instructor Zephyr stood before them and explained the details, the next task is combat assessment. Since it's the first day, I have to assess your combat skills, strength, and standards before designing a combat method tailor-made for you. Just as Zephyr finished his speech, a few marine officers came forward and told them to form a line. Then, all the recruits were asked to fight them. Unquestionably, the officers were quite strong, trained personally by Instructor Zephyr. They began to test the recruits' combat strength by fighting against them. Blaze and Jun were able to fight the officer as equal and it was considered as good but Fergo and Shizo was able to defeat the officers. After the assessment, the recruits were divided into three groups, Guard 1, Grade 2, and Grade 3 from strong to weak. Blaze was placed in Grade 1 along with Fergo, Shizo, Jun, and other recruits. All the 20 recruits in Grade 1 looked at each other memorizing the faces. Days passed by, everyday intense training followed to strengthen their physical body while they were beaten daily by stronger marine officers. No one was an exception, even Blaze, Fergo, Jun were also included. Six months passed by. Garp left the island just after a week they arrived and Blaze hadn't seen him ever since. Finishing his daily one-punch man workout in the training ground, he panted a little while sweat covered his face. Next, he has to complete 1,000 punches and kicks. At first, they were difficult to complete but gradually it became routine for him. Name, Blaze Hunt. Occupation, Marine. Constitution, 14.8 Strength, 14.9, Speed, 14.7. Devil Fruit Potential, 14.7. Haki, None. Items in Storage, None. Free Attribute Point, Zero. His strength reached a bottleneck for a quite few days, now he regrets not keeping some free attribute points. If he had, he could have easily got past this limit. In fact, he completed quite a number of tasks in this period of six months. For example, when he first challenged Fergo, Jun, Shizo, and other recruits. It's also how he got past the 10 bar limit. But lately, the system didn't issue him any tasks. So his strength ceased around the 15 bar limit. Aside from training his body, he also studied his devil fruit ability. He has a pre-nomination, his devil fruit powers will reach a new stage once he gets past the 20 bar limit. At that moment, Jun walked towards him finishing her daily training. They became friends since they are in the same grade and fight one another in the combat class. Not just Jun, Blaze was familiar with everyone in the same grade even Fergo. In fact, Fergo is a kind of leader in their grade with his friendly and approachable character. Of course, it's just a facade and Blaze knew it very well. If he hadn't seen his true personality manipulative, insidious, and ruthless in the original series, he would have been deceived like others. He didn't unveil his true nature to others. Even if he did, no one would believe him without sufficient evidence. He too didn't care as his current priority is to improve his strength. If there comes an opportunity, he will take care of him in the future. Blaze, finished your daily training. Jun sat near him and wiped the sweat from her hourglass body. Her skin was smooth and charming, drenched in sweat. Yes, Blaze replied looking at Jun. She's young, beautiful, and above all, pretty strong. Even though she's a woman, her physical strength is a tad stronger than him. Blaze can only overwhelm her in terms of combat skills. Are you going to take that assessment? I heard it's pretty tough to kill the animals on that island. Jun asked. Yes, Blaze replied. The assessment Jun was talking about is hunting an animal by traveling to an extremely dangerous island which is situated few kilometers of their north. The island is similar to Rusukena, a prehistoric island that hosts many extinct animals. No weak animals live there. Even harmless looking bunnies on the island are very strong and can overwhelm pirates below 50 million bounties. It was said some of the strong ones on the island are as powerful as headquarters vice admirals. With Blaze's current strength, he will be crushed with a single blow. The assessment is very simple, survive two days inside the island and kill a creature. It doesn't matter whether they are strong or not. The crux is, they have to carry the carcass to the shore. If a marine recruit was able to do that, Instructor Zephyr will teach them Rokushiki. Of course, most of the island is under surveillance. If anything happens, they will be rescued before they lose their petty lives. Anyone can take part in the assessment but it's not compulsory. If you take part and pass the assessment you will get to learn Rokushiki. Blaze has to admit Zephyr's method of training is truly good. The assessment reward not only encourages stronger but also weaker ones. What about you? Blaze asked Chun. I will participate. 
I think everyone in our grade will join. Yes, with your strength, it won't be a problem for you to survive and kill a creature. Blaze chuckled. Don't flatter me. In our group, only Fergo and Shizo can battle you on equal ground. Blaze shook his head and said, Even so, I am very weak. Why do you want to become stronger? Jun asked, curious. She's been noticing Blaze from the start. He trains two times harder than others, he's talented with good combat skills but he still says he's weak. So that I can do whatever I want. Only the strong decide the rules in the world. Blaze replied but Jun didn't understand a single word. He shook his head. He's from the earth and his vision is quite different from ordinary people. Just thinking of meeting the legendary characters makes his blood boil in excitement. He wants to challenge all the strongest people and experience their power. He could tell his mentality changed as soon as he transmigrated as if he was born to battle. He isn't a battle maniac but the thrill of defeating the mightiest characters he just watched on the screen it's different and enjoyable. The day he met Garp he confirmed this point. And also, only by battling the stronger opponents, he can improve his strength fast. That's why after learning Rokushiki, he plans on leaving the training camp. Only in the seas, he can meet and fight stronger opponents. Though he seeks stronger opponents, Blaze wasn't a fool. He can't hope to defeat characters like Whitebeard, Kaido, Big Mom, and other strong characters with his current measly strength. For advanced chapters, you guys can check out my p.a.t.r.e.o.n page. I have 30 plus advanced chapters there. Patreon.com slash fan if I see mortal. Next day, nearly 100 marine trainees stood in the open field decked in low-ranking marine uniform and geared with a basic weapon of their choice, knife, sword, pistol, rifle, and so on. Standing at the front were Blaze, Fergo, Shizo, Jun, and others of the same grade. They were the most relaxed and confident group while the ones behind them were rather nervous. All of them had heard many things about the island from other senior recruits who went there a few months back. The creatures living on the island are scary and formidable with terrifying strength, while regular swords and bullets can't even penetrate their skin. What the older recruits are trying to say is, if they aren't careful, they might even lose their lives. This kind of talk can deter normal recruits, but against somebody like Blaze, it only invigorated him further. I have to commend you guys for your courage, even after knowing the threat and the kind of creatures that roam that island, you lot have come forward. Your training is simple, survive and stay alive. Instructor Zephyr nodded his head in approval. Apart from instructing them in daily training, he didn't teach them much as he was concentrating on senior recruits. Even so, he found the current training recruits much pleasing to the eyes. Especially trainees like Jun, Shizo, Blaze, Fergo, and few others. He's sure of the fact that with proper supervision and discipline, they will become splendid marines in the future. He's waiting for them to enhance their physical strength. Once they reach the target, he will teach them Rokushiki. It's true most of the island has been closely monitored. At any moment of danger, a marine officer will reach your location and protect you from danger. Even so, you won't be saved unless requested by yourself. A marine officer came forward and explained a few rules that they have to follow once they reach the island. Soon, the 100 marine recruits along with few marine officers and instructor Z reached the island in rowboats coated in sea stone. Setting foot on the island, Blaze found the air here is so fresh and pure. The island looked quiet and serene as if what they heard from the senior recruits were nothing but hearsay. On the beach part of the area, a two-storied building with a marine symbol was constructed and shielded by special wooden spikes. Blaze saw some strong marine officers patrolling the sandy area of the island with an alert expression. He heard even marines who trained their haki come here to practice it. All the recruits stood in the beach area staring at the densely grown forest before them. The tall and thick trees with several protruding branches blocked them from any kind of sounds that may have given them an impression about this place. Go, survive and stay alive, Instructor Zephyr said. Some eager ones dashed into the forest-covered region as soon as Zephyr finished his speech. Blaze, Jun, and others also followed suit. Since forming groups isn't allowed, all the recruits split up and sprinted in different directions. Even if one another meets inside the island, they have to part their ways after 5 minutes. Blaze sprinted for 15 minutes before meeting a strong creature that sneaks attacked him from a blind spot. With ultra-quick reflex, channeling his strength to his legs, he dodged the strike by leaping back. The attacker is a huge black tiger spread with yellow stripes. Unlike regular tiger, it had a shiny saber tooth and club-like tail as weapons. Its electric blue eyes looked threatening and wild. Growling. Failing to kill its target in a single pounce, it circled Blaze looking for an opportunity, a weakness. Likewise, Blaze also scrutinized his assailant and calculated his next move. He figured the beast isn't a normal one from its attack. Its glittering claws are more than capable of ripping his flesh and heavily injure him. In the next moment, both the tiger and Blaze clashed. Blaze refrained from using his devil fruit powers so that he can enhance his combat ability. The tiger aimed to finish off the prey by sweeping its sharp claw at the target's neck. Blaze skillfully evaded the strike in midair by wheeling his body and threw a punch. Bang! His fist connected with the tiger's head, blasting it a few meters back. It hit the ground with a heavy thud, but in the next moment, it instinctually jumped back to its feet. Glaring at Blaze, it shook his head a few times before once again leaping at him. It didn't shrink back, even after knowing its prey is stronger than it thought and may lose its life in the process. It's how life on the island is like. In order to survive, they have to eat. If they want to eat, they have to kill. Otherwise, they will get killed. Undaunted by the fearlessness and wild nature exuded by the tiger, Blaze faced it head on. He didn't rush to kill the tiger, as it's a perfect target to hone his skills. Licking his lips in excitement, Blaze pulled the sharp dagger stowed in his back. At a breakneck speed, he bridged the gap and slashed at the tiger. The tiger blocked his attack with its club tail. What astonished him is, upon contact a clang sound resounded. What a tough tail. Exerting a force on its tail, the tiger pushed Blaze back and leaped onto a nearby tree. Its shadowy form easily blended with the surroundings and disappeared from his view. It didn't diminish his vigilance but further enhanced it. 
He knew the tiger creature is finally showing its strength and the advantage it had in its own terrain. A rustle sounded around him. Something shifted from one tree to another in lightning fast speed leaving behind nothing but yellow bolts. Out of nowhere, an attack came. Even though he remained vigilante, he couldn't react in time and something heavy rammed his back. The force of the attack jostled him forward. At that moment, Blaze skillfully stopped the momentum by flipping two times and steadied his steps. Utilizing the surplus force in his body, Blaze yelled and slashed the dagger at his back with his entire strength. SPHHHLT. The tiger stopped in its track and slowly limped to the ground lifelessly. The dagger in his right hand directly pierced its right eye and penetrated its brain. Blaze didn't celebrate his lucky victory. He doesn't have that luxury. Not wasting another second, he yanked the dagger out of the tiger's corpse and scurried away without looking back. In the next second, a huge bird descended from the sky and grabbed the tiger's corpse. But before it could take off, a green-scaled snake slithered out from the shadows of the tree, frightening the bird. It then pounced and twisted itself around the bird immobilizing it to the ground. The bird struggled with everything it got but everything is in vain and it soon succumbed to death. While the snake enjoyed its brunch feathered bird and tiger the silence once again occupied the area as if nothing transpired here. For advanced chapters, you guys can check out my p.a.t.r.e.o.n page. I have 30 plus advanced chapters there. Patreon.com slash fan if I see mortal. Blaze ran for a kilometer before relaxing his pace. It was really scary. The eerie breath he sensed when he killed the tiger, he won't mistake it. A creature, stronger than the tiger laid in wait for him. If he remained there for another second, he would have been attacked. As he expected, this island is similar to Rusukena, if not more dangerous. If he explores any further inside, he may even perish even before he could call for help. Only after learning Haki, he can venture inside. Till then, it's best to wander across the outskirts. Wiping the blood trail from his mouth, Blaze checked the bruise on his back. The tiger smashed his back with its club tail, which injured his back heavily. If not for his Senju constitution, he couldn't have survived the strike without one or two broken bones. Now, a few hours is enough for him to heal completely while consuming nutrient-rich meat will speed up the process. Blaze then wandered the forest searching for his next prey. The creatures on this island possess good instincts and terrifying combat strength, it's a good place to improve his combat ability. The next two days went by, Blaze encountered several creatures with varying strength. There were times he confronted some strong animals and had to flee for his life. He also met two marine recruits but they parted ways after greeting one another. Today is the third and last day of survival training. He had to admit, he enjoyed being on the island and fighting other animals. He learned many survival skills and watched fights between other animals. Overall, it's an exhilarating adventure for him. Blaze's carefree stay came to end when he met a six-meter tall ape covered in the golden mane and had four arms. It exuded a terrifying presence, enough to scare away other creatures in the vicinity. Its aloof eyes locked onto the chunk of meats roasting above the fire. Without a doubt, the luscious aroma of meat attracted the beast to Blaze. Noticing the ape's action, Blaze squinted his eyes. Fearless, he stood between the meat and blocked it from the creature's eyes. Roar. Provoked by his act, the ape let out an ear-splitting roar and lunged at him. Even before he could react, the ape's fist smashed his chest and sent him hurling backward. Blaze's figure destroyed a few trees on the way before hitting the ground. Coughing up a mouthful of blood, he raised to his feet while clenching his chest in pain. What the foo asterisk k? Why did such a strong beast come here? Blaze wondered with an incredulous expression. At the same time, in the monitoring room located in the sandy area of the beat, Zephyr saw the situation on the screen projected by a video transponder snail. He frowned while the other marine officers in the room also grimaced. It's the rumored four-armed golden beast? Why did it appear in the outskirts? It's bad. Even vice admirals will have a hard time facing it. That recruit is done for. Instructor Zephyr, what should we do? We don't have an officer here capable of obstructing the beast. I will stop it myself. Instructor Zephyr said and flickered away from the monitoring room. On the other side, blasting away the annoying pest that stood between it and the mouth-watering meat dripping with grease, the golden ape approached the roasting steak. As for Blaze, the annoying pest, he was naturally ignored. But will Blaze do the same, and remain thankful to the beast? The answer is naturally no. How could he leave the meat he carefully prepared for himself to others? He seasoned it with various spices he gathered in the forest and his hunger is also at the limit. He couldn't have anything in these two days because of the unfamiliar environment and lurking creatures which disturbed him from time to time without giving him any time to rest. The four-armed ape's action thoroughly provoked him and infuriated him to the core. His anger soared to the sky, unbothered by the consequence, Blaze charged forward and attacked. At that moment, the sound of the system rang in his mind. But he wasn't in a mood to check the notification. He has bigger things to worry about, meat. His hand glowed, forming red vapor around it. Aiming at the ape, Blaze shouted mentally, heat beam. A scorching beam of high temperature struck the ape's face which was inches away from savoring his steak. Boom. It's a beautiful golden mane charred to black but the beast remains uninjured. And the attack thoroughly provoked it. In the monitoring room, the marine officers watched the confrontation with open mouth. At first, they breathed a sigh of relief observing the ape disregarding the trainee and concentrating on the food. When they believed the trainee would escape using this chance, he attacked the beast seething in rage. They all thought, brother, what are you being angry for? You should have been happy the beast ignored you. It's the first time for them to witness a fight for food. The concept thoroughly perplexed them. The four-armed ape's eye turned fiery red, its rage tore open the sky. Roar. Hammering its chest, the ape jumped high and dropped straight at Blaze. Two of its upper arms clenched into that of a fist and aimed at his head. Meanwhile, Blaze released high heat and coated his right arm with fiery filaments like heat armor. He blocked the beast's attack with his heat-clad arm but he underestimated the four-armed ape's strength and impervious defense. Boom. The impact caused his legs to sink into the solid ground while a meter-long crater formed around him. 
A booming shockwave blasted the air around them along with the dust and dirt. The powerful force traveled from his arms to the body causing him to split another mouthful of blood. It's too strong. His legs weakened and his entire figure nearly squashed to the ground. At the last second, Blaze opened his mouth and blew a hot breath aiming at the ape's eyes. Alarmed, the ape withdrew its hand and sprang back. Cold sweat drenched his back. If he hadn't reacted in time, the ape's arm would have mashed his body into blood and gore. Strangely, he laughed wildly. Even he didn't understand why he was laughing at the face of death. There was no fear in his heart only excitement. Engaging such a strong opponent didn't deter him in any way, it only surged his fighting intent to another level. Ha ha ha, come. Yelling, Blaze raised his boiling arm to the sky and threw a punch at the ape. The strike pushed the ape a few steps back scorching its mane but it failed to inflict any injury. Blaze felt as if he was striking a steel plate. It's as if the golden ape practiced a tech high skill and hardened its skin and muscles to another level. His heat manipulation reached another level after his devil fruit potential attribute neared 15. Even so, his attacks failed to injure the ape. From this, one can tell how strong the ape is. Nullifying the scorching arm, Blaze took out his dagger and set it ablaze with a wave of his hand. Soon, the entire dagger turned into a glowing red metal emitting high heat and gray smoke. At the same time, the four-armed ape also sensed an extreme threat from the weapon Blaze possessed. The actual battle between them had begun. Instructor Zephyr arrived at the scene within a minute but waited patiently without interfering. He wants to see how Blaze would fare against an opponent stronger than him. As his instructor, he requires to find the extent of his fruit abilities so that he can help Blaze better in the future. It would also give him an idea, in which direction the devil fruit could be developed. The four-armed ape and Blaze clashed. The glowing red dagger strived to sever the creature's insides but the ape's defense is too good, or to be precise, Blaze's dagger skills aren't that formidable. Otherwise, with the burning dagger, he could have easily cut the ape's tough defense. But his attack only left a burning, shallow cut wound on its skin. Blaze's heat sense captured every minute detail the ape made and conveyed it to his brain. But against overwhelming strength, all plans are just parlor tricks. One of the four-armed ape's arms seized Blaze from the ground and lifted him like a chicken. Its electric blue eyes looked into the latter's eyes and with a quick spin, it flung him across the forest. The toss carried the ape's complete strength. The throw was so powerful, Blaze's figure transformed into a shooting star, and before tossing him, the ape's arm also squashed his body. The crushing strength cracked his skin and deformed his internal organs. His back smashed against countless trees and ruined everything in its trajectory. Blood dyed his entire body while some sharp branches penetrated his skin. Zephyr appeared next to Blaze and caught his sorry figure. He could have saved him before the ape could strike, but he wanted the latter to remember the near-death experience. Still, the ape shouldn't have hurt his student. It overstepped its boundary. Zephyr looked at Blaze who lost his consciousness after he caught him and then at the four-armed ape. The ape munching on the roasted meat happily suddenly shivered, as if it was eyed by a powerful predator. Turning his head, it scanned the vicinity and spotted Zephyr carrying Blaze in one hand. Letting out a false threatening roar, the ape took a step back recalling a painful memory it once experienced. Skarm. Zephyr uttered the cold word, but the tone pressed the ape with oppressive pressure, frightening it to the core. Whimpering, the ape scurried away and vanished into the shadows of the forest. When Blaze opened his eyes again, he laid in an infirmary bed, and to his shock, he was bandaged like a mummy. Fortunately, they left his face bare. Hi, I was transferred back to the training island. When he tried to move, PRIC cling pain spread throughout his body. Even so, it's somewhat bearable to him. He lost his consciousness only after Instructo Zephyr caught him and he remembers everything clearly. That damn ape. I am going to beat it black and blue the next time we meet. Blaze silently muttered. Tearing away the bandage on the hands using his mouth, he then removed it from his legs. What he needs most now is, not rest but meat. Dragging his injured body out of the infirmary, Blaze then moved towards the cooking area. The air was fresh outside and from the way sunlight directly hit his face, he knew it's around breakfast time. On the way, other recruits and officers scrutinized him with weird expressions because of his mummified appearance. Unbothered, he walked forward. Along the way, he checked the system interface in his mind. He remembered the notification and wanted to check what it's about. There was a change in his attributes, a joyous matter. Name, Blaze Hunt. Occupation, Marine. Constitution, 15.1 Strength, 15.1, Speed, 15.1, Devil Fruit Potential, 15.2, Haki, None, Items in Storage, None, Free Attribute Point, Zero, Task Reward, Defend Against the Type A Creature the Golden Beast for a Minute, Reward, Plus 1.0 Constitution Plus 1.0 Devil Fruit Potential Plus 0.5 Free Attribute Point, Status, Complete, Do You Want to Collect the Reward Now, Yes Slash No, A Rich Reward, Blaze Silently Thought and Accepted It, Though He Was Injured Heavily, He Felt the Strength Coursing Through His Body, he broke past the 15 bar limit that hindered him for a month. The pleasant thing is, he broke the limit on his own. He didn't expect the system to release a last minute task. Now, he can raise his attributes once again. After collecting the reward, his attributes changed. Constitution, 16.1. Devil Fruit Potential, 16.2. Examining his attributes, Blaze unknowingly reached the cafeteria where he met the other trainees of the same grade, Jun, Fergo, Shizo, and others. Blaze, when did you wake up? You were unconscious for an entire day, you know. Are you alright? Jun asked in a worried tone. Yeah, I'm fine. Blaze replied, taking a seat in their group. I heard you met the so-called Golden Beast which can even terrorize rear admirals. Why didn't I have such luck? Shizo commented. Blaze can only shake his head at his comment. It's good that you are fine. You should taste the wild bear meat and seafood fried rice, they are delicious. That's strange, where's the fried rice? Fergo spoke. Fergo, there wasn't any fried rice today. A marine trainee face palmed. Oh, that's right. Fergo nodded his head, unblushing. 
Fergo, why is there a fork bound on your cheeks? Blaze asked, intrigued by Fergo's rare moment of witlessness. Is there? Fergo continued to eat his food with a straight face while everyone laughed. How do you guys do in the three-day survival training? Blaze asked. Aside from Fergo and Shuzo, none of us crossed the three-day limit. I thought you would easily pass but didn't expect you would encounter a type A creature. You can only blame it on your luck. No worries. I gained a lot from fighting the creature. Blaze comforted himself. It's regrettable that he missed the chance to learn Rokushiki but he can't stop the inevitable. Having a satisfying breakfast, saying goodbye to Jun and others, he went to meet Instructor Zephyr. First, he wants to thank him in person for rescuing him in time, and second, he needs to ask what's the alternative way to learn Marine Rokushiki since he failed to survive for three days. For advanced chapters, you guys can check out my p.a.t.r.e.o.n page. I have 30 plus advanced chapters there. Patreon.com slash fan if I see mortal. Instructor Zephyr's office. Blaze thanked Z for saving him and asked, Zephyr Sensei, I want to learn Rokushiki. I knew I failed the survival training, please give me another chance to prove my strength. It's true. If he hadn't met the four-armed ape he could have surely lasted for three days without any problem. Oh, why do you want to learn Rokushiki so badly? I saw senior recruits training in Rokushiki. If I learn them, I can enhance my devil fruit powers to another level. With that, I would have an easier time chasing pirates. Zephyr nodded his head. You don't have to prove anything. You fought bravely against the golden beast whose strength pairs with vice admirals. I will teach you Rokushiki from tomorrow. Thank you, Zephyr Sensei. Blaze returned a good military salute and left the office. Regarding this, Z smiled and shook his head. Next day, 25 some marine trainees gathered in the training ground, called by Instructor Zephyr himself. Blaze was among them. He has an idea of why he gathered everyone, but he wasn't sure. Blaze, you went to meet Zephyr Sensei yesterday, did he notify anything? Shizo asked while Blaze shook his head. I think it's about the survival activity we finished, Jun shared her thoughts. Let's wait and see. Another trainee from their group commented. All while, Fergo stood there without joining the conversation. After a few minutes, Zephyr came to the training field accompanied by two marine officers. It's been six months since you guys arrived at the training camp. All of you have trained well in these six months and utilized the time properly. I handpicked the 25 of you based on the talent, hard work, and courage exhibited by you all. It's time we move things forward. We will teach you Rokushiki, and after a month, you will be sent out of the training camp, and will be asked to hunt the pirates. Zephyr's unexpected speech stunned the trainees as they got comfortable with the peaceful days, forgetting the true horror of the world. Just training daily isn't a way to become strong. Zephyr knows this well. The six-month time is for everyone to prepare themselves to face the cruel world. If they utilized this time well, they would survive, otherwise, die horribly in the hands of pirates. Some of you may already know, some may not. Let me explain in detail the fighting technique called Rokushiki. It's a special, superhuman martial art developed by the world government. Only marines with sufficient merits can learn this art. But we decided to teach this technique to you all without any merits, considering the present situation of the sea and rampaging pirates. We aren't giving it away for free, we are just teaching you in advance so that you don't die early, facing pirates. Zephyr's words awoke some of the trainees. Some were excited thinking of learning the famous martial art of marine. Others were worried about facing the pirates. Rokushiki has several different styles. All of them are distinct from one another, centering on various physical parts. Most who learn Rokushiki tends to be specialized in one technique. Only a few trained all the styles to perfection. Let's start with Soru commonly practiced by everyone and easy to master. Zephyr introduced Rokushiki. Blaze was excited listening to the method. He badly wants to learn Rokushiki because of its explosive strength and to complete the system task. Moreover, he was positive he can improve his devil fruit power with this technique. He wasn't bluffing when he said that to Z. The one month time limit pressed the marine trainees hearts. In the first few days, Zephyr taught the different styles of Rokushiki and how they function. Past that, it's in their hands to learn them. Since Blaze already knew the styles of Rokushiki and how they work, he comprehended the techniques quite fast. Jun, Shizo, Fergo, and even Instructor Zephyr were quite shocked by his progress. They couldn't fathom how he understood the techniques in a few days. Of course, none of them knew Blaze was a previous resident of Earth and watched One Piece countless times so he knows pretty well how Rokushiki functions. Once he became proficient in different styles of Rokushiki, a notification sounded in his head. Task, learn Marines Rokushiki and become proficient in it. Time limit, one year. Status, complete. Reward, 2.0 Constitution plus 2.0 Devil Fruit Potential plus 1 Free Attribute Point. Do you want to collect the reward now? Yes slash no. Sweet. Blaze was overjoyed seeing the reward. With this, his strength will soar to a whole new level. Accepting the reward, he checked the interface. Name, Blaze Hunt. Occupation, Marine. Constitution, 18.2 Strength, 18.2. Speed, 18.1. Devil Fruit Potential, 18.3. Haki, None. Free Attribute Point, 1.5. He now has 1.5 free attribute points. He has a nagging feeling, his strength would undergo a qualitative leap once his attributes cross the 20 bar limit. He wasn't in a rush to use his free attribute points. He wants to save it for later. Lately, the system stopped issuing him daily tasks and menial missions such as daily push UPS, squats, and so on. It should be related to his strength reaching a certain limit. Anyhow, Blaze is happy with the system rewards and the missions released by it. One shouldn't be too greedy. Days passed, the one month limit neared. Only three days remain. Strangely, Fergo proposed a challenge to him on his own accord, today. Blaze doesn't know whether it's to test his devil fruit powers or because of this stunning growth. It doesn't matter to him, anyway. He was also interested in testing Fergo's combat strength. 
He happily accepted the challenge. Naturally, their fight attracted the entire training camp as the two of them are one of the best marine recruits of this year. Even though Blaze hadn't revealed his devil fruit powers to others, somehow, everyone in the training camp learned he's a devil fruit user. He too wasn't bothered by it. Their fight became the topic of the island. For advanced chapters, you guys can check out my p.a.t.e.r.e.o.n page. I have 30 plus advanced chapters there. Patreon.com slash fan if I see mortal. Next day, Fergo and Blaze stood in a combat field, surrounded by nearly 200 people, marine officers, recruits, and even the ones working on the island. Their fight grabbed attention, and Instructor Zephyr's appearance was the best proof. Jun and Shizo supported him, even though they are friends with Fergo too. Blaze knew Fergo is strong. After all, he's one of Doflamingo's elite officers with a highly manipulative and insidious character. He doesn't show his true nature here as he keeps his true identity a secret. But it's a truth that he's a powerful, intelligent, and knowledgeable man. Furthermore, he's the type of person who's confident of his ability and thinks he's superior to others. If Blaze wasn't wrong, his strength is already close to Vice Admirals. After all, he already knows how to use Haki. The good thing is, Fergo won't reveal his full strength, so as not to jeopardize his cover. Instructor Zephyr gestured with his hands to start, and the fight began. Blaze took the initiative and dashed forward with incredible speed. Fergo welcomed his punch with bare hands. It's a known fact in the camp that Fergo possesses an enviable physique with powerful explosive strength. Blaze's fist collided with Fergo, sending a powerful shockwave and swirling the wind around them. The onlooking marines screamed in thrill. Oh, watching fighting between others is great entertainment to most. Fergo, your strength had improved from the last time we sparred. Blaze casually commented and threw another punch which Fergo blocked with ease. Yes, yours too. Fergo answered and countered with a punch. The two of them didn't utilize any fighting techniques, they just compared their strength with fists, a straightforward approach. After a few bouts of exchange, they gauged each other's strength and began to fight seriously. Blaze's attributes reached 18, if he's not wrong, his physical strength is close to headquarters rear admirals. If he broke past the 20 bar limit, then his combat strength can even rival rear admirals. With his current strength, fighting Fergo who's hiding his strength is a piece of cake for him. Both of them fought to a standstill for a minute and Blaze decided it's time to take the fight to another level. What he doesn't know is, Fergo was also shocked by his strength. He didn't expect Blaze's physical strength will advance to such a level in a few months. Will he be a threat to Daffy in the future? Fergo thought. He thought of killing him secretly but he soon rejected the notion as it's too risky and he wasn't confident in eliminating Blaze. There are too many variables. He knew Blaze is a devil fruit user who had abilities similar to heat heat fruit. It's also why Fergo challenged him. He wanted to find the devil fruit powers of Blaze and to what extent he can use them. Yes, he's gathering intelligence. And, Blaze satisfied his wish by exhibiting his devil fruit powers. In truth, his action has a deeper meaning. He wants the marines to know his existence and his superior strength. Only by gaining others' respect and reverence, he can gain a solid foothold among the marine ranks. If he wants to confront the world government in the future, he can't do it alone. He needs the power of marines. Blaze wasn't a scheming person in nature, but he's a person with great vision. Sora Blaze muttered. His figure disappeared and appeared behind Fergo startling the onlookers. Even before Fergo could react, a punch slammed his back and sent him hurtling forward. The onlooking marines couldn't believe, the all-powerful Fergo in their heart lost his advantage. Sure enough, you mastered Soro to such perfection, Fergo spoke and vanished from Blaze's sight. Let's compete to see whose Soro is better. A voice sounded behind his ear, Blaze's lips curved a little, and his figure vanished before Fergo could launch an attack. The Soro martial style allows the users to move at extremely high speed. The principle behind the move was to kick off the ground at least 10 times in the blink of an eye. It's an explosive strength released from one's leg. The stronger the physique, the faster the users will be. In Fergo's case, he hadn't mastered the Soro, yet. But, he compensated for the lack of mastery with brute strength. As for Blaze, he achieved slight mastery over the Soro style but unlike Fergo, his explosive strength stems from his devil fruit power. Every cell in his legs pumped high heat and pushed his speed to another level. No one aside from Instructor Zephyr noticed this, as his control over the heat manipulation reached another level. Fergo and Blaze's form flickered all over the combat field, agitating the viewers with another great zeal. At some point, the eyes of the recruits failed to catch the fighting figures. Oh my god, these two are monsters, their strength is close to rear admirals trained by Zephyr Sensei. A senior recruit commented. How did they improve their strength so fast? It's inconceivable. Jun, Shizo, and other recruits familiar with Blaze and Fergo were the most shocked ones. Especially, Blaze, they didn't expect him to fight Fergo as equal. When did he become so strong? Jun mumbled. The memories of Blaze flashed in her eyes and how he worked twice harder than others. Without her knowing, he surpassed her. An inexplicable feeling arose from the innermost part of her soul, her heart kindled with the desire to get strong. Not just her, other recruits also resolved their heart watching the fight between them. At the spectator stand, a precious smile appeared on Instructor Zephyr's face. It's what he hoped from the fight between Blaze and Fergo, the two hadn't disappointed him. After a minute, Fergo's figure emerged some distance away from Blaze. He panted a little, as continuous use of Sora's style drained him to a certain extent. As for Blaze, he looked rather relaxed as if he wasn't even fighting. Of course, he knew Fergo's faking his exhaustion as he's clear about Fergo's strength. Fergo wanted to force Blaze to use his devil fruit powers but he underestimated the latter's strength. He narrowed his eyes a little and he admitted defeat. If he showed any more of his strength, there's a possibility of his cover being blown. It's better to stop now. If there's a chance in the future, he will eliminate Blaze. Just as they ended the fight, Zephyr came forward and gave them rare praise. You two fought well and grasped the nature of Sora quite well. With repeated practice, your Sora will attain perfection. Work hard. Two days later. 
All the Marine recruits nearly 300 who came to the training camp stood in the open field, some were excited, some were nervous and others were hesitant. Today is the last day of the training camp. From tomorrow, they will be sent to the sea. The sea where innumerable pirates roam and death happen every second. A cruel world, indeed. Without the strength to protect themselves, all of them are nothing but ants. Instructor Zephyr came to send them off. From today on, you guys aren't recruits but Marines with character justice printed behind your back. You shouldn't betray it. After earning sufficient merit, anyone can come back here to learn hacky. Try your best to survive the merciless sea and come back. After that, Zephyr called some of the promising recruits and sent them off individually. Blaze was called too. You possess a devil fruit power, and I can tell, you improved it to a whole new level from the first time we met. But you shouldn't rely on your devil fruit excessively. Your individual strength is what matters the most. Now go and discover the world. And, do what your heart says. Thank you, Zephyr Sensei. I won't let you down. Blaze saluted and boarded the marine ship docked on the shore. The next day, Blaze along with Jun, Fergo, Shizo, and other recruits reached the marine ford. After staying on the secluded island for more than seven months, Blaze finally came back. He's thrilled thinking of sailing the seas and meeting strong opponents. As soon as they arrived at the marine ford, shocking news reached their ears. It was talked about by all the marine officers present in the marine ford. Three months back, a person climbed a red mountain, burned an entire city in Mary Geosa, and freed all the world Nobel slaves. It incurred the wrath of celestial dragons. They want all the slaves to be captured back and the person who freed them to be executed. They directly blamed and displayed their anger on marines. Recently, most of the marines in the headquarters were dispatched for this purpose and tasked to catch the slaves back. This statement angered Blaze. The slaves are also native people of this world. Why are they treated differently just because of the celestial dragon hoof mark? Where's the justice in this? If even the symbol of justice marines fails to shelter them then who will? Sure enough, only the strongest decide what's justice and what's not. The desire to become stronger burned more fiercely in his heart. Celestial dragons, they better don't provoke me. Otherwise, I will incinerate every last one of them to ashes. Blaze thought. Around evening, the marine recruits were asked to assemble before the marine ford tower. Fleet Admiral Kong came personally and spoke some encouraging words. After that, Admiral Sengoku and a few marine officers took his place. Sengoku came forward, introduced himself, and began to speak about some major laws that all the marines have to follow strictly. Past that, he explained the merit system and its values. For every nameless pirate or pirates with a bounty below 1 million they capture, they would get 1 merit point. If said in an easier way, a million would yield them 1 merit point. For example, capturing or killing a pirate with 25 million bounties will yield them 25 merits. Past 100 million bounty, the merit point differs from pirate to pirate. Using the merit system, they can raise in ranks, request certain privileges, buy devil fruits, weapons, learn rokushiki, haki, and various other perks. Hearing the merit system invigorated the recruits. Their eyes gleamed, who wouldn't want to possess power, status, and authority higher than normal people. But will it be so easy? Definitely not. Blaze was sure of that, otherwise, marine headquarters would have birthed many strong characters. Then, the recruits were assigned under marine officers holding captain and above ranks. Except for Blaze, Fergo, Jun, Shizo, and few other marine recruits who showed potential in training camp. All of them are the ones who learned Rokushiki in training camp. Without a doubt, Instructor Zephyr's evaluation was taken into account. Once the other recruits left the area, Sengoku once again spoke. You are guys are the future pillars of marine. Countless new pirates were emerging every day and we can't deal with every one of them with our limited strength. So, it's up to young marines like you to stop the pirates. It's also why I didn't assign any ranks to the 25 of you. Because you will pick your own rank. Marines need strong officers, so I am going to conduct a small test to measure your strength, courage, and will. Speaking up to this point, Sengoku exuded a strong demeanor. For an entire month, you will act alone and hunt the pirates. You won't receive any sort of help from the marines. You will act as a pirate hunter and wander the first half of the Grand Line, companionless. The number of pirates you either capture or kill this month will determine your marine rank. Your process will be closely monitored by a secret unit. Make no mistake, they won't interfere with what you do. Likewise, they won't bother even if you are killed. Sengoku's words agitated the recruits. How will they hunt the entire pirate crew alone? It's absurd. Even Blaze was shocked a little. The others are not like him, possessing a system and strong devil fruit powers. With a slight mishap, they will lose their life. Not all the pirates are like Luffy, they won't show a hint of mercy. But none of them raised their opinions, affected by Sengoku's solemn bearing. At that moment, boisterous laughter came from a distance. Wahahaha, you are scaring the brats Sengoku. Garp approached the group from behind. Garp, what are you doing here? Sengoku asked with a twitch of his nose. Didn't I send him away? How did he smell the recruits are arriving today? What attracted Blaze's attention, is the tall man accompanying Garp future admiral, now vice admiral, Kizan. A cool type of guy, like his fruit ability. Blaze would always be amused by his character in the One Piece series. Seeing him in person, amused him further. Blaze brat, you look stronger than before, Garp commented, noticing his figure. Thank you, old man Garp. Blaze thanked by bowing his head. Hearing his statement, both Sengoku and Kizan covered their mouth and tried their best to hold the laughter. Garp-san, when did you become an old man? Kizan asked with a smile. This brat. Garp narrowed his eyes and his figure vanished. Before Blaze could use Soro, his head was hit by a fist of love. A Blaze groaned clutching his head. It really hurts. After giving them instructions, Admiral Sengoku dismissed them. As for Blaze, he followed Garp and spoke to Kizan. Hello, you are Vice Admiral Kizan, right? I heard you will be soon promoted to Admiral. Ah, you are. Kuzan asked, completely puzzled by Blaze's overly enthusiastic character. I'm Blaze, a Marine recruit. 
Can you duel with me? Blaze asked. He wanted to test whether his devil fruit is immune to ice type powers. Kizan, can't you accept his challenge? Garp asked, drawn by Blaze's idea. No, it's a bother. Why do I want to do that, Garp San? Come on, Kizan, he's a promising, young marine. As a senior, can't you guide him for a short while? Garp persuaded but Kizan rejected him, showing his lazy attitude. Like in the series, Kizan had a lean, long build and stood nearly 10 feet tall. He was dressed in a white buttoned vest over a long sleeved navy blue shirt. Aokiji noticed Blaze because of his devil fruit powers and also heard about the latter from Garp. As an ice devil fruit user, he's sensitive to hot things and he senses a blazing breath from Blaze. As if he's the sun. Cough, that's the truth. Pity, no one knows. Aren't you scared of wandering the sea alone? It's pretty tough you know, surviving the sea, alone. Kizan spoke. No, I think I am going to enjoy it. Blaze replied without thinking, getting a weird stare from Kizan while Garp laughed. Blaze knew he's weak now so his words may seem ridiculous to others but that's what his heart feels. He's the type of person who wants to explore the sea and have a fight with all sorts of strong people. The only thing that stops him from doing what he wants, is his lack of strength. Vice Admiral Kuzan, how do you see justice in your eyes? Blaze asked. Hearing his question, Kuzan's eyes shone for a moment before diminishing again. A nostalgic feeling rose in his heart. When he first joined Marines he used to be like Blaze, fired up, passionate and curious. But now, he's lazy to care about such things. After thinking for a moment, he replied, I am lazy to answer such a troublesome question. Well, how do you see it? Kuzan asked, interested in how the latter would answer. There's no right or wrong in this world, only the strongest. In my case, I am the justice since I will ultimately become the strongest. Blaze replied, emitting a strange momentum unknown to himself. His words came from the depth of his heart. He firmly believes in himself and no one can sway his resolve. Kuzan was taken aback for a moment, hearing his answer. Blaze's words stirred something deep inside his heart and made him contemplate. Unlike Kuzan, Garp was stunned by the momentum emitted by Blaze. This brat possesses the aura of House Hoku Haki users, will he awaken it in the future? Sengoku's in for it. The trouble he brings is going to be a headache for him. Wahaha, brat, you are too young to utter such profound words. Grow up first. Garp kidded. Blaze didn't mind Garp's tease, instead, he voiced his opinion about the test. I think the test arranged by Admiral Sengoku is a good one. It grants the young marines like us, a chance to temper ourselves and view the world as it is. Wahaha, your words keep on amusing me. The first half of Grand Line won't pose a threat to you, but it will be a test to your heart. Traveling the world alone isn't easy. Don't die brat, we will meet after a month. Leaving such words, Garp and Kuzan disappeared into the marine tower. The 25 recruits were granted two days off so that they prepare themselves mentally. Some were indignant that Admiral Sengoku didn't give them an option. They don't want to do this, but none of them had the guts to raise their voice against Sengoku and were forced to take on the test. Two days later, saying his good wishes and goodbyes to Jun and others, Blaze set off from the headquarters with a small wooden boat and ample rations to support him for a week. Under the shocking eyes of marine recruits, Blaze's back blasted a tremendous heat, thrusting the wooden boat forward. In no time, his figure vanished in the vast sea. Like him, the other recruits also left the headquarters one by one. If they remain strong and survive this month, they will meet again at the headquarters. After a few hours of sail, Blaze's log pose rocked a little and locked onto an island. Ah, finally. Blaze was excited as it's going to be the first adventure in the outside world. One Piece World, here I come. It's been a year since he transmigrated to One Piece World. Unlike when he first arrived, he got stronger and grown for the better. His strength is insignificant among big shots, but it's more than enough to protect himself. His true journey starts from here onwards. Blaze checked his attribute panel. There wasn't much change to it, but... Name, Blaze Hunt. Occupation, Marine. Constitution, 18.3 Strength, 18.3. Speed, 18.2. Devil Fruit Potential, 18.5. Haki, None. Items in Storage, None. Free Attribute Point, 1.5. Unlike before, regular training fails to raise his attributes. He has a Senju bloodline, but to bring out its full potential he needs to improve his Constitution Attribute. His Constitution Attribute is directly related to his Strength and Speed. The only way to increase them quickly is via the system. It's true, basking in the sun enhances his physique but it's a slow and gradual process that can't be accelerated using external means like training. He saves the free attribute point for later use, to break past the 20 bar limit. Currently, he has two tasks in the system task panel. Task, One Punch Man Workout. Description, do 2000 push UPS, 2000 sit UPS, 2000 squats, and a 30 kilometers run daily for 750 days. Time, 750 days it isn't mandatory to fulfill the tasks daily, you can take rests in between. Reward, 5.0 constitution plus 5.0 devil fruit potential plus 3 free attribute points. Task, punches and kicks. Description, do 1000 punches and 1000 kicks daily facing the sun. Time, 1 year. Reward, 2.0 constitution plus 2.0 devil fruit potential plus 1 free attribute points. It's been 7 months and a few days since the system released these two tasks. To complete the one punch man workout task, he needs another one and a half years. As for the second one, he could finish it in another 5 months then his strength will have another leap. I have a long way to become the strongest person in the world. Blaze mused while his heart throbbed in expectation. I hate Grand Line's weather. It's no wonder it earned the named Pirate's Graveyard. Blaze uttered as he walked on the sea. His feet emitted heat, keeping him just centimeters above sea level. Looking behind, he sighed. Behind him, a colossal cyclone reaching the sky could be seen, rampaging everything in its way. Should he hadn't abandoned his wooden boat, the storm would have pulled him in, too. 
He's strong but against such a natural phenomenon, he's nothing but another common man. Of course, in the future, it would be a different matter. He has been traveling the sea for a day. A night has passed but he still hasn't reached the island pointed by the log pose. Just as he was worried about the predicament, Blaze saw a vague outline in the distance. It's the island. He muttered. His figure turned into a blur as his legs emitted high heat. It was a normal-sized, coral island spread with vegetation. Around 15-20 ships were anchored some distance away from the shore because of pointy reefs that may damage the ship. A wooden bridge around a kilometer long could be seen extending from the island that serves as a pathway to the visitors. What caught his attention is, most of the ships docked about the island were pirate ships along with one or two merchant ships. It puzzled him. Even though pirates roam the seas, they would think twice before anchoring their ship on an island. There are chances that marines may lay in wait to capture them in one fell swoop. But here, things look completely different. Is there no marine base on this island? This entire place looks weird. Setting foot on the island, he didn't strike a conversation but observed the situation. After overhearing a few pirates' conversations, he got a general idea about this island. This island, named Little Reef, is famous among pirates, criminals, and bandits alike. There's only a single town on the island known as Outlaw Town. The entire town seemed lively spread with half-drunken pirates and bandits. There were numerous street shops, bars, restaurants, pleasure houses, and even casinos to entertain them. After filling his stomach in a nearby restaurant, he strolled the island to get a firm picture in his mind. He struck conversations with many and tried to get as much information as he can. After an hour, he got the general gist of it. This island is similar to Whiskey Peak, but it's ruled by an underworld people who had the backing of celestial dragons. It's also the reason why Marine overlooked the activities of this island. The outlaw town is used as a base to purchase the items pirates looted from others. For example, gold, expensive ornaments, treasure maps, unique objects, and even slaves can be sold at a good price. In exchange, the pirates can convert it to belly, buy weapons, information, and so on. It's a kind of black market that operates to collect gold and special things. Blaze didn't know there was such an island in One Piece world. What infuriated him is, the marines definitely knew about the island but completely disregarded it and let it operate. A longtime resident of this town recommended Blaze to an auction house. It attracts a lot of buyers and takes place once per week. This week's auction is going to start in an hour. This auction is popular here as it holds the history of selling devil fruit once. Blaze snuck into the auction and attended it. Since Blaze was dressed in ordinary civilian clothes, he didn't arouse any suspicion. Otherwise, he couldn't have entered the auction house so easily. Blaze's reason for coming here was to check out the items sold by the auction house, and at the same time, he wants to try his luck. As a famous auction house, it attracts most of the infamous pirates visiting the town. If he'd wanted, he could burn the entire town to ashes. But he won't do that since he isn't strong enough to oppose the world government, and there's no guarantee the purge wouldn't affect the innocents. He isn't afraid of the world government, but he isn't a fool to offend them at his weakest. After an hour of waiting, the auction began. Like every other auction house, it started the bidding with ordinary items and ended the auction with a rare one. The auction went on for two hours, but Blaze just memorized the faces of pirates who brought things at a high price. The one who attracted his attention is Scourge Pirates commanded by Pirate Captain Barty. They are a notorious and raising pirate crew in the Grand Line who often appears in the newspaper, recently. Blight followed wherever they went, till now they have destroyed four towns and sunk two marines ships. If they followed their course without any deviation, they would reach the Sabayati archipelago in another few days. Their total bounty reached 65 million berries, an imposing number to normal people. Their captain Brady the Scourge has a bounty of 52 million berry on his head. Their vice captain Guy's bounty is 10 million while the rest of their crew bounty sums another 3 million berry. Brady is a devil fruit user, it's also why his bounty is high. He ate Noko Noko Mi, which allows the user to create and control poisonous mushroom spores. In the original series, it was non-canon type devil fruit eaten by Masuro, younger brother of Wapol. With Blaze's current strength, fighting the Scourge pirate crew could be a challenge but that's what he was going to do exactly. He wants to test himself. The only advantage Blaze had over them is, the Noko Noko Mi devil fruit powers won't work against him, the heat ability user. The primary strength of Scourge pirates are Brady and Guys, both of them are battle-hardened veterans with amazing physical strength. As for the 35-something minions present in their crew, they are nothing to him. Blaze plan on commencing his pirate hunting operation by blazing the Scourge Pirates to ashes. He has no intention of capturing them or showing mercy to this type of pirate crew. They destroyed towns, exterminated countless families, and captured the children as slaves just for money and sport. It stirred his sore spot. The memories of previous body owners as a slave flashed past his eyes and he involuntarily clenched his fist. Though the previous owner of the body is dead, the memories of the latter's father and mother influenced Blaze. The word slave seems to trigger something in me, it should be related to the hate accumulated by the previous body owner. The pirates killed his parents and captured him. Blaze inherited not only the previous body owner's memories but also the love of his father and mother. Blaze is an emotional person, he can't just simply discard the feelings as if they don't exist. But instead, he welcomed it. The Scourge Pirates deserve a fate worse than death. And he will show them. The same day evening, the Scourge Pirates left the Little Reef Island as their log pose locked onto the next island. Filling their supplies, they set off. Blaze followed them by walking high in the air. After a few minutes, the island disappeared from his eyes as the pirate ship sailed the Grand Line. He then directly landed on their ship mast and listened to their conversation. From what we heard from the residents of Outlaw Town, we will reach the final island of the first half of Grand Line in another few days. It's worth celebrating, don't you think so, Captain? A pirate with a huge scar on his left side of the face spoke. Yes, we definitely need to party. 
The rest of the pirates also agreed with him. Only Brady and guys remain stoic as if the bunch before them isn't their own crew. Brady's face even had a tinge of disdain in them. Clowns. He muttered inwardly while gulping a bottle of wine. He has no sense of comradeship towards them except guys, as they are pretty weak in his eyes. He knew, with such weaklings he has no hope of crossing the red line and enter the new world. Once he reaches Sabayati, he will discard them and gather some strong underlings. At that moment a taunting voice reached his ear, startling everyone on the board to the core. Captain of the Scourge Pirates, Brady the Scourge, I think the bounty of 52 million berry is fairly high for you. Who? Brady shouted while the rest of the crew jumped to their feet and looked around them on high alert. But they were shocked to find a single figure hovering in the air. Hovering. They knew normal humans aren't capable of flight. Who is he? They all thought. Who are you? Brady asked. His posture relaxed discerning the enemy is nothing but a single man. He isn't confident in his strength but he trusts his devil fruit ability very much. Undetectable to others, his pores released microscopic poisonous mushrooms into the air and covered the entire ship. A pirate hunter, Blaze replied while his heat sense detected the microscopic particles invading his body but soon burned to ashes under extreme heat. He smirked and kindly remained Brady. Don't bother. Your devil fruit ability won't work on me. Today is the day of your death. Hearing his words, Brady's face turned ashen. He understood his foe came prepared. And before he could react, Blaze's body boiled to an uncontrollable degree and released extreme heat. The high heat affected the surroundings and the entire ship below him caught on fire. What's happening? The pirates on the ship panicked and jumped onto the sea. He's a devil user. I don't understand, why did such a strong person target us? His devil fruit powers completely suppress our captain's ability? Shit, even the sea is evaporating. The pirates were filled with fear confronting someone countless times above their caliber. Only three people remained on the burning ship. Brady and guys were able to remain on the ship because Blaze controlled his heat so that he could have a good fight. Sorrow. Blaze uttered and his figure vanished alerting guys and Brady. And before the two could react, his figure reappeared behind guys. Blaze threw a simple punch. A blazing heat compressed in a straight line pierced guys and created a fist-sized hole in his body. Guys looked down to find a gaping hole just below his chest, where his heart thumped a moment ago. Now, it's gone. Meanwhile, thread-like blood fumes vaporized insides were expelled from the wound. Gazing at Brady, he collapsed to the ground, lifeless. Even in death, he couldn't perceive how he died. His death didn't deter Brady in any way. He stood like a rock staring at Blaze, without averting his gaze. Brady knew he lost the only advantage his devil fruit ability against his enemy. Burning ship with no solid footing, limited space, nothing's in his favor. But he won't go down without a fight. Blaze uttered, come, fight if you want to survive. Brady coldly looked at Blaze and dashed forward. Pink energy surged from his body and wrapped his arm, firing rapid purple bullets at him. In response, Blaze waved his hand and a fiery red spherical orb originated from him. It covered everything with a one meter radius, vaporizing the attack's shot at him. As for Brady, he created six clones using his devil fruit ability. Blaze couldn't distinguish which is the real one. Parlor tricks. Blaze muttered and concentrated his devil fruit powers. A scorching shockwave erupted from him and spread in every direction. It's his new attack, Extinction Wave. The extreme heat obliterated everything in its path, destroying the half-burned ship and leaving nothing but countless debris scattered in the sea. It also incinerated Brady's clones and burned his real body. Thrown in the sea, Brady's body weakened losing his devil fruit power. His body also had several burnt marks while smoke radiated from them. Lucky for him, the sea saved him from completely burned to crisp. Otherwise, he would have been long dead. Brady supported his body from submerging into the sea with the help of a half-burnt wooden plank. We have nothing against each other, why do you hellbent on destroying us with no chances of survival? Brady asked, gasping for breath. He couldn't understand the reason. The surviving crewmates also looked at Blaze, waiting for his answer. Blaze hovered in midair, gazing at the wretched pirates without an ounce of pity. There's no reason. I just find your pirate crew unpleasant to the eyes. I hope the answer satisfied your curiosity. Answering the question, Blaze stretched his right hand and shot a compressed heat at Brady, burning him alive. He increased the temperature slowly so that he would have a good time. Looking at the horrifying scene of their captain being melted alive, the pirates were scared out of their wits. Demon, he's definitely a sea demon. All of them swam at high speed and flew in different directions, hoping to get away from Blaze before the latter could target them. Blaze didn't bother about the scattered weaklings as they can't escape from him in the open sea. He isn't going to spare any of them. Burning Brady to ashes, Blaze closed his eyes and released his heat sense which spread in every direction. His current range is only 500 meters but it's more than enough to take care of the weaklings. His senses soon locked onto every one of the surviving pirates. In front of him, countless bullets made of extreme heat actualized. Targeting the running pirates, Blaze fired the bullets with his thought. All of them pierced the pirates' heads, eliminating them in one move. Just like that, the Scourge Pirates who had a total bounty of 65 million berries were annihilated from the faces of the world. At that moment, the system notification sounded in his ears. Ding, Marine Reward Panel Unlocked. Destroyed Scourge Pirate Captain Brady and his crew. Reward, 0.5 Constitution plus 0.5 Devil Fruit Potential. What? Blaze was startled for a moment. It means destroying the pirates also yield reward from the system. Is 0.5 final or it differ based on the pirate bounty? Blaze then checked his attribute panel. Name, Blaze Hunt. Occupation, Marine. Constitution, 18.8 .8 Strength, 18.9, Speed, 18.8, .8. Devil Fruit Potential, 19.0, Hacky, None, Items in Storage, None, Free Attribute Point, 1.5, Wonderful, I am just one point away from breaking past the 20 bar limit, Blaze mused happily, gazing at his current free attributes, he has the sudden urge to raise his Devil Fruit Potential Point to 20, he won't mistake the feeling, 
He was sure that raising the attribute to 20 will further unlock his devil fruit powers. After pondering for a moment, Blaze used one free attribute points on the devil fruit potential attribute and directly increased it to 20. As soon as he did that, a qualitative change happened deep in his body. From the outside, there was no change but he could feel it. He couldn't describe it in words, it's like something confining him till now has been broken. From deep within him, an explosive power erupted. Blaze's entire body shined in golden energy while dark orange heat originated from within him and expanded for half a kilometer. The sea below him boiled and turned bright red under extreme heat. The temperature of the heat released by Blaze, at the moment, is at least a few times powerful than the previous heat temperature. In no time, the dark orange heat wave transformed into a reddish orange flame. With him as the center, the entire sea burned. Around half a kilometer, there was nothing but flames. Make no mistake, Blaze wasn't generating the flames nor he has the ability but under extreme heat, the heat wave's appearance resembles fire. In fact, the word fire shouldn't be used here because it's not even fire, but superior heat manipulation. The change in density and raise in temperature is the reason for this change. Blaze who was feeling the changes in his body slowly opened his eyes and gazed at the flame expanse before him. With a slight chuckle, he restrained his devil fruit power. The flames around him vanished. Only then it struck him, he was floating in the air and left with no boat to sail. It looks like I have to run the entire way, again. Blaze sighed while taking out his log pose. Thankfully, his log pose locked onto the next island before he left the outlaw town. Just as he prepared to leave, an elderly voice entered his ears. Boy, come this way. Who? Blaze looked around startled but failed to spot another soul. He was sure the voice came from the northeast direction but there was no one as far as his eyes could see. It bewildered him and at the same time, terrified him a little. What soothed him is, he didn't sense any kind of maliciousness in the voice. The voice had nothing but calmness. The other party piqued his interest since there's no danger he has no reason to be afraid. Blaze shot towards the direction the voice came. At first, he thought he would meet the other party in another one or two kilometers but he failed to see anyone. He traveled, traveled, and traveled for nearly ten kilometers before seeing a region surrounded by fumes, in the middle of the sea. Don't tell me, the owner of the voice is staying inside the fumes? But how can he communicate with someone 10 kilometers away from him, is it related to his devil fruit? Blaze thought and moved forward. High temperature assaulted him once he neared the island. What startled him is, the further he traveled the greater the temperature became. Blaze is an exception. If it was any other person in his place, they won't survive as the temperature reached an unbearable level. Once he entered the fume-covered region, he saw an island spread with volcanic mountains and lava rivers covered most of the island. The extreme heat on the island didn't affect Blaze in any way as he's immune to heat. Even so, he couldn't visualize how someone could live here. At that moment, an elderly man with a hunchback figure appeared before his eyes. He looked thin, feeble with shaky hands carrying a metal stick for support. What the fuck? Blaze uttered in his heart as he didn't expect to meet a dying old man here. Old man, are you the one who called me? Blaze asked, gulping a little. The old man seemed ordinary at a glance but a formless pressure from the latter made him think otherwise. Yes, follow me. The old man softly uttered and turned around. Blaze followed and scrutinized the surrounding. Temperature apart, the ash here is so dense, toxic, and will suffocate an ordinary person to death. The entire island is dotted with small volcanoes while a supermassive volcano dominates at the center of the island. As they walked, the old man spoke, young man, are you a marine? Yes, Blaze replied as he had no reason to hide his identity. Furthermore, his instinct tells him lying would do him no good. A marine in undercover, huh? The old man muttered. No, I'm not an undercover marine. I am just a marine recruit sent out of the headquarters to complete a test hunting pirate cruise without marines assistance. The total bounty of pirates I either kill or capture determine my rank. Blaze stated. Oh, interesting. It seems like the marines of now have improved. A change is needed. After all, it's a great age of pirates. To stop the innocents from getting hurt, the marines require strong officers. You look young, but your words are like someone who witnessed countless histories. Strange. The old man spoke while Blaze remained quiet. The reason I called you here is because of your devil fruit ability. It surprises me. Did you eat some kind of heat-based or temperature-based fruit? Yes. The devil fruit I ate grants me the ability to control and manipulate heat however I want but it's more than that. I haven't fully grasped my abilities yet. Blaze answered. Amen. I can see that. Chatting they reached the massive mountain located at the island center. At the foot of the mountain, he saw a large man-made cave with basic amenities. The old man didn't enter the cave but perched himself on the small seating stone placed outside it. As for Baylis, he directly sat on the black soils without any tinge of dislike. I can tell you are super strong but I can't feel your depth. I have met some strong people, but no one can come near you. Blaze told what's in his heart. Blaze wasn't bragging, it's the truth. He has met Sengoku, Garb, Kuzan, Zephyr, but none of them had the aura exuded by the old man before him. It's a strange aura as if none in the world can oppose him. The old man restrained it well, but Blaze somehow felt it. Ho ho ho, what are you saying? I am just an old man counting my death days. The old man brushed off his comment but he stroked his long white goatee with a satisfied expression. It's like he was waiting for Blaze's praise and purposely leaked his aura. And so, the old man finally showed his true colors. Young man, I can see it, you possess a unique ability heart of strong. The time when I roamed the seas, it's considered the most fearsome ability. Hearing his words, Blaze's face flushed a little and he replied by scratching his head. I don't think I am as strong as you claim. I have a long way to go. True, your heart is pure and innocent right now, but it won't always be. Your experience, choices, and what you see with your eyes may affect them in the future. So crave my words clearly, boy, things happen in life, but don't let them influence your goal. You own an outstanding gift, don't lose it. The old man solemnly stated. Blaze kept the words to his heart as he knew they are precious. 
Why did such an unusual young man like yourself join the Marines and become the world government's lapdog? The old man asked, looking nonchalant. I'm under nobody's command. I am being me. As for why joining the Marines, there's no particular reason. In the pursuit of becoming strong, I want to protect what's left in the world. And, I know I can't do it alone, so I choose the Marines. Once I become strong, I will surely break the Marines from world government control and make it independent. Ho ho ho, a nice goal you have there. You're going to have a hard time achieving your goal. The world government isn't as simple as they seem from the outside. I know, you know, MN. There are countless mighty peoples in the world and yet, none can usurp the world government from its throne, an unconcealed proof of their strength. Hearing his words, the old man laughed. Ho ho ho, you keep on surprising me, boy. What's your name? Blaze, Blaze Hunt. Good name. Blaze, I think we were predestined to meet today, don't you think so? I don't know, old man. What's your name? My name is Black D. Magnus. I'm pretty sure my name's foreign to you as the world government destroyed whatever traces left of me and made sure no one discovers our history. It looks like you did something that threatened the world government. Ha ha ha, you can say so. I am not the first and I won't be the last. Most of the pirates who reach the end of their adventure will eventually have to confront the world government. Even if you don't, they will come looking for you in the name of cleansing the world or something like maintaining world peace. What a load of bullshit. When his speech reached this point, the temperature around the island rose uncontrollably, affecting the surrounding. The temperature is at least a few times stronger than what Blaze can unleash with his fruit abilities. It's not the end. Aside from the temperature, an overpowering pressure erupted from the old man affecting Blaze. The sudden change frightened him a little. Facing the intense pressure, a feeling of powerlessness and dizziness overcame him. At that moment, a mysterious power exploded from his own body as if they were provoked by something and confronted the pressure released by the old man. The two forces one red and one golden clashed in midair, splitting the air and wrecking everything in its path. It shocked Blaze. It's the clash of House Hoku Haki, that means I awakened my House Hoku Haki. Oh my god, when did I awaken it? Who is this, old man? What is his story? Blaze wondered, gazing at the two clashing forces. At that moment, the old man suddenly retrieved his Haki and the temperature too returned to normal. 